No, we're going live. We're going live. We're live. But are we're we live? Yes. Are we live? Yes. Right. I'm alive. You're are dead. we? Dead as a doornail. <sighs> Feeling a little <coughs> dead today. Excuse me. Welcome to the Sunday podcast. Some people are in church. We're in a studio. Raise that up. Because real estate is our religion. Let's all pray for a deal. Please send us a deal. I promise I'll do good with it. Amen. Okay, where are we at? <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Yes. I'm alive. Uh -oh. Okay, so. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Technical. Technical difficulty? No. No. I was on. What? It was your phone? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. All right, so what are we doing? We're here. It's Sunday. We're looking to help some people out, you know, do a little charity work, baby. And uh, let's see what we can do. What do you got to do to call in with your phone number? All right, go to benmala.com and click on the podcast tab. And if you're on Twitter, go to hashtag askben, uh, put your question and phone number. And what about the email? Ask Ben Mala or something? It was askben at benmala.com. Yeah. But preferably okay, the so, website. Yeah, yeah, go to the website. Right. Yeah, the website. So let's get some callers Check here. We ain't there. got all goddamn day. Let's go. And hopefully uh, our producer, Rafael, is going to put on that hour thing I did in Palm Beach. So if anybody wants to fall asleep watching it or, you know, you got nothing to do and you want to watch it, I highly recommend it. I think I did pretty good, you know. It was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun helping people and seeing, you know, all those people and stuff. All right, so who do we got? We got a caller? Yeah, I'm ranging calls right now. He's Sorry, dialing fix. in a caller. What? Fix your mic. Fix your pants. <laughs> fix my fix pants. Fix your face. Your pants are always falling down, all right? I wear a belt every day. Yeah. Do I look like my brother? You wear a belt. And my pants don't really fall down because I squeeze them on so tight they don't come down. I see that. He wears the same belt for many years. He just keeps putting more holes in it. <laughs> You know, no, no, no. Bigger, I, bigger. I, I went to the elastic ones now oh. that they sell at DXL. It's great. You, you wear can, suspenders. You can lose. It's like a suspender, but you wrap it around your waist. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's easier. Okay, so what do we got, Rafael? We got any callers calling in or what? Yes. All right. Who do we got? Let's see. Um, what are we doing? Let's see. This week, uh, let's see. We closed on the Win Dixie. Yep. Closed, closed on, on that. the Publix. Mm -hmm. We closed on the Sweet Tomatoes. We're getting ready to close on the apartment building, and then we satisfied our ten thirty one. We traded one hotel for four deals. Very good with minimal management, except the apartment building, but it ain't much either. Yeah. Have fun. You gotta go out there and take no over. problem. Mm. We'll we see. got it. All right. Oh. We got a ring. Ding ding. Who we got? Hello? Cheers from Portugal. Portugal? This guy, uh, Rue. Portugal, Florida? <laughs> not home, not home. I that don't person think. left. So anyway. Somebody asked, how's the home depot? I met a guy yesterday. I met going. a guy yesterday. He does laboratories. He's in the lab business or the pharmaceutical business. He said he leased 400,000 square feet. I said, listen, you need more square footage? I'm going to start looking for that kind of real estate. He leased 400,000 square feet. Remember the caller last time we were on here? Yeah, but this Said is he had a... Uh, this has to be the laboratory. That's got to be like really nice, clean stuff. Yeah, you, you really need to raise your mic up or raise something. Raise the mic. Raise the go. mic. Raise the mic. Let's raise the bar. There you go. Yeah. Because even I'm... All right, so we got nobody or what? Yeah, I'm calling. But nobody He's answers. calling. He's calling. Nobody answers. Louis Venn Vlogs. How's it going? <laughs> Who are we talking to? Uh, I'm just, you know, reading the comments right yeah, now. There's a I bunch like of comments. Comment. I like to give you a comment. How yeah. much did you lose in a hard rock last night? Do time? I really have to say? <laughs> Tell the truth. I lost truth. about a thousand bucks. A thousand? No, I lost oh, a thousand yeah. bucks. A thousand All right, maybe fifteen, but it, that doesn't. Shit. You know, it was a thousand. Pissing money away to the hard. No, nah, but I won like twelve hundred, sixteen hundred the last time I was there. So I felt. Like, I just gave it back. It was a recycle. It yeah. wasn't really, like, losing. It was, recycle, you know, a right. net a net gain of probably, like, you know, 300 bucks, if you want to count the last yeah. time I was there. So. I don't know. I've seen how you play. How do you play? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that hits on 15s. No, no. It was the me. guy that I was playing oh. with who was screwing it up. But he was playing with way more money than me, so I stepped back and just let him play. Huh? Hello, it's Ben and the gang, and we're here. How can we help you today? You know who we are? Hello? We dropped this call. Hello? Hello, hi. Can you hear us? It's Ben. Yeah. How ben. are you? How are you? How can we help you? Oh, Mr. Ben? Ben Mala? 
Vin Malala. Malala. La, 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 la. Hi. Hi, how are you? Fine, um, how are you? Yeah, I had a question. Um, I, well, I live in New York. I live in New York City. Queens. Uh oh, there you go. Queens? What part of Queens? Uh, Sorry, Flushing. Yeah. Um, you know why anyway, they call it Flushing? You know why they yeah. call it Flushing? Because what? you know why they call it flushing? Uh, no. Because it used to be really r bad, and then it was known they wanted to flush it down the toilet, but now it's good. So how are you? Yeah, good, good. Okay. Anyway, um, well, I mean, the real estate here is pretty, pretty good now. Um, anyway, I, I own several buildings here, and uh, I was on, I was on want to go to uh, a hotel business. Okay. Number so one. How, number one. Let's let's. What type of real estate do you own right now? Apartments. Apartments. Like 16 okay. unions, eight unions, four All right. unions. All right. So you you and me, we're alike. We started with apartments. The hotel right. business is not really real estate. The hotel business is a business. Okay? It's not like apartments. You give somebody the keys to the place, pay your goddamn mm -hmm. rent. If something breaks, call me and I'll fix it. And that hotel right. business, it's a 24-hour operation. In fact, there's right. a brand new hotel that just came on the market in Far Rockaway, which I wouldn't go, on Beach 21st Street. But the point is, listen, before you can't just go in a hotel business. It's it's a, it's a business. You got to have 24 hours a day people checking people in, checking people out. Uh, you got housekeeping. If there's any food there, you're really going to lose money on that. Uh, you know, it's a business. It's not like just owning real estate. It's going to take up a lot of time and a lot of employees. I can run 100 apartments with two people, one maintenance and one person in the office. A hotel, you probably need 50 people with housekeepers and desk clerks and managers and, and, all, the, and all the supplies you need, the sheets, the pillars, and all the crap you need. I mean, the toilet paper. So you got to really think about it. Because the hotel business, you can make a lot of money in it, but you got to have experienced operators running it for you. So be very careful. Maybe, you know, I don't know. You better maybe start yeah, with because, the Airbnb. Because I'm zone. thinking, because you start with the apartment too, right? So then you jump to a uh, hotel business. I don't know how you did it, but I just want some advice from you. So, Well, you know, I did it because it was very hard to find a multifamily deal because the prices went up so high. And then I was lucky. You know, the girl in our okay. family, she went to college and got her master's in it. And then we took away the teacher, the professor from the school with her. So, you know, we came into the hotel business with a lot of experienced people that knew how to take them over and run them right. I mean, you got to really know what you're doing. And if you get involved with franchises, you know, you're mm -hmm. probably going to have to hire a management company at first because the franchise is not going to approve you until you have experience. But it's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week operation. It's not like apartments. So you better really think about it uh, before you do it. You know, but it, it can make a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But um, it, it's 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 more of a business than it is being in real estate. You're actually running yeah. a business. Yeah, I understand that. Um, you can buy you know, hotels. To... You can buy hotels dirt cheap. But the, the reason why is because the hotel can't make any money. You know, so you got to right. be careful. Right. Uh, yeah, because we have all the capitals that out there from the, from the the buildings we bought. Uh, we can you know we can pull out the uh, for, pull out the refinance uh, the equity loan, so we can uh, use that to purchase the hotel. But we don't we don't like any uh, cheap hotels. We want like at least like three star hotels. You know. Yeah, I mean so, you know, but you got to know how to operate them because if you turn it over to a management company to operate them. They're going to spend right. your money accordingly. They're not going to care. They're going to overstaff it. They're going to. They're not going to look around for deals. They're not going to operate it as efficiently as like an owner will. So uh, you better you better really think about it because if you don't have experience in, in running a hotel, uh, you're going to be at the mercy of a management company to run it for you. But um, right. I'll tell you what, we got some hotels for sale in Florida. You want to come to Florida? Come on, right yeah, now. Can, I got yeah, uh, right me, now. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, go we to, can do that. Yeah. Go, go track down a guy named. Um, uh, he's selling two of my hotels. He works for Burcadia. That's the name of the real estate company. His name is um, what's his name? Preston Reed. Preston Reed, and and Burcadia. He's going to a big conference to sell two big hotels we got. But these hotels, I'll tell you right now, we're looking at about, you know, in the mid thirty million range. You know, they're big hotels. But, I mean, and then you got to go somewhere. If you do want to buy a hotel, 
It's all about location. It's it's more than being a good location. It's got to be a location that has a demand for hotels. You know, in New York, uh, you know, you should do pretty good, but you're gonna pay a lot of money for a hotel in New York, I would think. You know, so yeah. And then sometimes, you know, you might want to start with the lower brands like we did. We started out with the Choice, the Ramadas, uh, the what was the one you did in Fort Lauderdale? You you made a hotel. Clarion. Clarion. Sometimes it's good to start out with the lower ones to get the experience to deal with the higher ones. But, I mean, you know, there's definitely brokers out there selling hotels. You should go out there looking for one, and but you gotta you gotta be prepared for that management because of heavy oh, okay. heavy management heavy management. All right. All right. Well, you have a good day okay. and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Dan. you. Good Thank luck. You. Okay. So what else we got? You got anybody you got else? Some, uh, you got some people asking comments. What are the comments? Put the comments up there. Well, I've been writing notes. Waiting, I've while been you're writing notes. For a call, yeah, I've been writing notes. And let's see what the comments. So is. some people want to know how's your gym and your diet going? My gym and diet were going good, but something happened. I banged my leg. I got an infection. It hurt my foot, so I had to stop walking the beach. But it's getting better. But I'm really trying to watch what I eat, and uh, I'm on what they call the nothing white diet. So I invented it myself. <laughs> so what's that mean? White. Like no bread, no stay rice? Stay away from you, white boy. Uh, no bread, no <laughs> rice, nothing white. All right? No sugar, no nothing. And it really works if I can stick to it. But So you I'm can eat chocolate? No. Well, not even white chocolate. Nothing. No chocolate, sugar, you know, no sugar. Okay, sugar, sugar. okay. Chocolate. It's got the sugar yeah, in it. Yeah, I understand, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. All right, what Also, uh, what you else want me to keep got? going or you got a call, Rafa? Okay. We got a call, we got a call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's knocking at the door. Somebody ringing the bell. All right. Did they answer? Hello? Hello, hi, it's Ben. How are you? How can we help you? Hi, Ben. Actually, I love your channel. I just wanted to ask you, um, which books would you recommend for real estate? All right. Now, a lot of people aren't going to like what I'm about to say. <laughs> I've never read a book in my life. I've read contracts. I read, you know, things pertaining to real estate, articles. But, you know, I don't know of any books. There might be some out there. You know, to me, the only way you're going to learn real estate is to get in there and do it. You know, you start off small. And you work your way up into bigger deals, you know. But it's really, real estate's simple. What are you trying to do? You want to buy a house? You want to buy a couple of units? What do you want to do? What do you think is better? Well, like, you know, it's always houses? nice to start off small, you know, if you can. You know, if you can find a good deal on a house or a duplex or a triplex, you know, it keeps it small and simple. You know, you, you, got, you know, basically you got to have a place that's rentable in decent condition. You know, you got to rent it out. You got to know what the rents are in the neighborhood and try to get, you know, as much rent as you can, whatever the market is. And uh, basically, you know, it's simple. You get a person a, a regular rental contract, a one-year lease, hopefully, you know, and uh, you, you rent the place out. You collect the rent. If something breaks that's not their fault, you got to fix it. Big deal. But um, it's not that hard. All you need is a good real estate agent to find you a hot deal. You know, it's all about not paying too much for the property and making sure you got enough money coming in. You know, make sure the rent it gives you some sort of profit after you pay your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance, and some maintenance. You know, so it's a simple calculation. But I don't know if you need a book. You know, if you like reading and you want to read a book, fine. But I, honestly, I wish I could recommend one, but I, I don't own any books. You know, but you should you definitely... Any, like, you know, what you good, might want to do is... You, you might want to take a course, you know, like principles of real estate 101 I yeah did there's that. books there's books you you want to go get the book that they teach at those classes maybe the principal 101 real estate well, that's class a, that's a college course that's, that's what i'm saying so you want to go get you know true books from like a college i don't what think you, you need want to is go a real estate a, agent you need an agent to find course. you a deal everything else will take care of itself you know you can call uh you can you can get a lease online you can go to a you know even a real estate agent will help you with a rental lease if they find you a duplex I mean, it's really simple business. Have you ever rented an apartment before yourself? Have you ever rented a apartment from somebody? Have you ever rented? Uh, yeah. All right, so you know. You paid the guy to rent. You wrote, a, you signed a lease, and uh, you paid him to rent. It's simple. I mean, you know, you really right. don't need a book or a course or anything, in my opinion. You just need to get in there and do it and just, you know, make sure you do it with a proper lease when you're when you lease to the tenant. You know, but uh, I, I would be more worried about finding the deal than worrying about how to do it. Don't worry about how to do it. Just find a deal that you know is worth, you know, a lot more when you buy it or fix it up. 
and how do you like handle negotiations? Like, well, that's why you have an agent. You know, that's why I keep begging people. Listen, when you're a buyer, use an agent that's out there. You know, doing this stuff already. Find the agent that specializes in your neighborhood of duplexes, or triplexes, or fourplexes, or you know, or houses, and, and find that agent that knows it's a good deal. Because if he's not going to say, you know, they, you know, they don't. Typically, an agent's not going to say a bad deal if you tell him, "Listen, I'm in this to make money, and if I make money, I'll keep buying from you, and you'll make money." So, you know, you need to get with an agent because that's all they do every day is look at the market, what's for sale, what the square footage is, how much you can rent the place for. You know, you need to you need to get an agent to represent you and help you. You know, and then you have to sit down with the agent and make sure that the deal's a good deal, and then buy it, rent it, and uh, enjoy the uh, income from it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Have a, yeah, you too. All right. Who we got? Who we got? <clears throat> Any comments He's up got, there? Yeah, we got some comments. Comments. Um, hey, just um, go back to you know uh, back to what you were saying. But there is local, you know, like apartment associations <laughs> that put on schools and stuff like that. So you know, I would say if you guys did want to learn and more about the management side of the business, always go to your local apartment association. There's also the National Apartment Association who puts on courses and things like that. So if you go to NAA, I believe dot com. Or, um, you know, FAA is Florida and, and so on for your state. You can, on there, there's training courses. And that, those are the ones in AA. I mean, I, I went to uh, Bay Area. I did a BAA, which is Bay Area Apartment Association. What'd you do? You get, well, the first thing you get is you get a, a NALP, which is a National Apartment Leasing Professional Certification. So what, you sat through a course? Yeah, you go in, they, they, they you, you take a course, they give you a book, and, and you read about the right ways to lease apartments to people. You know, what rules to follow, they teach you about fair housing, they teach you about the forms and how to fill out applications, and they just show you the general thing. So find your local real estate <laughs> Um, association. association, yeah, your local apartment association. Every every state has an apartment one's association. It's called the uh, managers, owners, apartment real estate. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. I mean, every state has one. So you can go out and you can get like what they call your NALP. You can get your CAM. You can get your CAPS. You can get all these different uh, designations. So CAM is uh, right. Cap him in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> the only school I think you ever went to was FU. Uh, anyway, very good advice, and yeah, he's right. You can go get certified, and you can go to these organizations and take these courses and get certificates, and it's a good thing. You know, it's good to learn stuff, especially with the uh, legal stuff going on today. Absolutely. I remember I used to go to the Section 8 owners uh, meetings. They held them for owners. I've been to a bunch of them. Teaching them how to operate under the Section 8 program. They were, Hi, Ben. Hey, how are you today? How can we help you? Very good, man. My name's Chris. Uh, I live near Toronto. I want to be the biggest, baddest property manager out there. In Toronto? Yeah. Very expensive place. I've been there. You know, it's not it's, so it's, bad. You know, uh, I don't know. If you can, can you actually cash flow if you buy something? Uh, to be honest, no. Like I currently, I'm I'm currently renting out a uh, condo to somebody. Um, but it's it's a uh, a below one percent property. I mean, you know, the problem is that you pay so much for real estate in Toronto uh, that there's no money left over. You know, uh, there's no cash flow from what I've seen. I mean, I have some friends there, and I looked at the market. And I said, man, I can't, I can't even think about being in this market. So I don't know how you're going to do it in Toronto because, I mean, maybe you know, there's deals out there. I guess people do retire, people do die. Or, I mean, it's all about finding a deal. Find a deal. You know, they got real estate people out there. I mean, are you actively looking for a deal right now? Well, you know what? I'm actually talking about the kind of property manager that would be dealing with, um, let's say, other people's property, uh, corporate property, commercial property. I mean, you know, it's all about your, you know, what what kind of return are you going to get on your investment? That's what it all breaks down to. You know, you got to find a deal out there. You talk about owning them, right? You're not talking about managing no, other no. people's. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm talking about as a career working oh, as a property manager. Oh, career and property management. I mean, that's great, you know, because. That's how you started, to be honest with you. Know, you that's how I started because you basically you manage other people's property. You get paid for doing it and uh, eventually you become an owner. But, um, I mean, uh, are you currently, what, what's your line of work right now? What do you do for a living now? It's actually very related. So currently, I'm a building operator at a hospital. Uh, I have lots of experience in like big buildings, and yeah. 
Well, but the thing is, you're not, you're, not, you're, not looking, you're not looking to give up that job, I'm sure. Uh, I'd like to, yes. He said he was a well, building operational manager? Yeah, like, a, like what do they call oh, like the, project uh, engineer for a hospital, or he's in charge of operational hospital. Like that guy that we went and... S- anyway, you know, uh, you, maybe you should put a resume together and see if you can get a job at a big uh, real estate property management company. I did once, you know, when I yeah, was young, okay. I, I went out there and I went to work for... Guys that were building from the ground up, they taught me development. They taught me property management. You know, I learned, I did property management. I worked for them. I mean, you got to be around other people doing it. You know, so and then eventually you can open up your own management company. You know, and then the management company can be very lucrative business because a lot of people, if they own a building, let's say that building is making a uh, hundred grand a month, uh, gross. They go up to gross, and they're going to charge you five or six percent just for managing it. You know, so you're going to make. Um, Five or six grand. You know, you're going to make, uh, you know, money off of their property without, you know, basically all you can do is pay the bills and make sure everybody here on site is doing their job. Uh, you know, so try to, you know, maybe go to work with a property, big property management company, you know, and see if they'll pay you at least what you're making now and you'll get more experience in uh, the residential uh, income side of it. Awesome. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm setting out some resumes. Yeah, there's always people, there's always a need for people in the property management business, always. You know, so uh, good luck to you, and maybe one day you'll open up your own management company, and then you'll have maybe a hundred people paying you five percent of their gross every month. You know, that's you awesome. You know, and then eventually a lot of those places sometimes sell to the property management company because you're the first person to know that they want to sell. So you know, property management is very good, but you know, leasing is a big part of it too. Not only the operation, keeping that place full. You know. Uh, you know, that's the main thing. Knowing how to market your product and, and keep it full and keep it at the best rent you can. So uh, I look into a property management company that's probably one of the biggest out there. Find the biggest guy and try to get a job with them. And then, okay. get, you know, get in and can then move up the ladder. Can I send you my resume, Ben? You know, unfortunately, we don't manage other people's properties. You want to get with a company that want, that manages, you know, maybe a hundred different people's properties. We only manage our own cool, properties, cool. yeah. I don't like playing with other okay. people's money. But have a great day and good luck to you. Thanks a lot, guys. Take All it right, easy. take care. Bye-bye. Bye. I mean, you know, I started in property management. That's how I learned how to manage property. And then I became an owner, you know, and um, I, I really liked it, you know. Because every month you know if you're doing good or not. It depends on how much the bottom line is. If your owner's making money at the end of the month, you know, that means you're doing your job. But if he ain't, you're not doing your job. So you, you figure out why he's not making the money, and you have to correct that. I've taken properties that were going to guys were going to go bankrupt. Even Mark, the guy that started me the business, when the military po- moved out of Oakland, uh, he had he was only renting the military. Well, the military shut down the base. What are you going to do? Well, he's lucky. I would sit on the steps of the housing authority, and I converted the place to Section Eight affordable housing for families and seniors, and that's what saved his ass. Otherwise, he would have had an empty building, you know? So management is the key to everything, you know? Well, it's the key to any business, I guess. So but. while you're talking about management, dude, there is a couple people asking, how do you screen <clears throat> tenants? Well, you're an expert on that. Well, but, all right, I mean, <laughs> I was leaving you to answer. <laughs> if they got a heart beating, the money, I take them. No, I'm no, 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 no. Basically, you want to look for a couple things. You want to look for uh, no criminal background, and you need to set a rental criteria and establish your rental criteria. You can't be sued by saying no criminal background. Remember? Your- well, I'm, I'm about to go into that. You know, right, you want to establish a rental criteria for your property and put that out and say, hey, this is what I accept, and I'm looking for two times the month in monthly rent and income, maybe two or three. It depends on your area. I mean, if you're in a good area, then you're going to ask for three. If you, you, you want to make sure that person can afford the rent and pay, you don't want to hear about, oh, my car broke down and they can't afford the rent. Uh, so you got to make sure they got the proper income. And then, um, I mean, on top of that, you want to do a credit check, obviously, make sure people are paying their rent on time. And then the most important thing that I think is absolutely the most important is an eviction search. You need to search all counties, all states, everything. How can you you check the whole country? You can. There's websites out there that let you, you, um, well, we use a company called Aim Rent. There's LexisNexis. There's there's probably a hundred companies out there that allow you to do this for a service <laughs> cost. You know, maybe like fifteen, twenty, thirty bucks a tenant. But you charge the person a fee for right. The you charge an application fee. So you know, you let this company do their due diligence. So you got to do give criminal. You, you got to do credit, 
And you want to do an uh, eviction check? Employment verification. I'm getting there, but that eviction check is really the most important because you know if they're skipping out on a landlord right now and they're under eviction, they're going to come to you and say, "Hey, I want to rent this apartment." You know, you want to make sure what kind of the situation. You don't want to inherit somebody else's problem. So when you're doing that, you want to do what's called landlord verifications. You're going to want to do a rental verification. So you're going to want to call their previous landlord, talk to their previous landlord, make sure that person is paying their rent on time, make sure that person doesn't isn't violating the lease that they're currently in or doing anything. You really just put that cigarette on top of the lion. Well, now the lion's got a reason to you're going to burn that lion. Burn, baby, burn. Don't burn the lion. Anyway, oh, back to, you, you know. He marks on his cigarette burn. That's gunshot wounds. Somebody used to twist his Stab wounds. Um, you know, you just want to make sure that you're doing a thorough background check on the tenant and uh, where they're currently living and, and make sure that you, uh, you know, do your due diligence on each tenant. You know, you, you need to, one thing is establish a rental criteria up front and hand that to that person the, at the same time that you give them the application. That way they know up front what reason they could possibly be declined for. And sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, if you have a young person, you know, right. that, no credit's that, not that, that doesn't credit. have any credit or no you're kind of worried about them, don't be afraid to get a cosigner. Maybe their parents will co-sign for them. Right. Or take a big deposit. Or take a bigger deposit, collect the last month's rent. So usually for us, what we do is if we feel that the person's not credit worthy or they don't have the rental um, uh, experience that they should have, then we charge a two-month deposit. Um, And that's going to take care of you. That's going to get you, if somebody doesn't pay their rent, that's going to get you the month that they didn't pay rent and also carry you for the month that it's going to take you to evict them. Um, And if you're in a state like California, you might want to take a, you know, four month deposit if you're questioning because it could take a lot longer to evict somebody in in, um, very liberal states. The one thing I'll tell you from my experience is when you rent to that person, you better sit down and look them straight in the eye and you better tell them, listen, the only people that can live in this apartment are the people on the lease. That's it. And if they're over 18, you better check out everybody on the lease. And if you're really smart, you'll meet the whole family that's going to be living there too. Because a lot of times people rent an apartment and they'll bring in their boyfriend or whoever, and you ain't got no information on this person. They start acting nuts. They start causing you trouble, and you got a big mess on your hands. So you make sure that person knows, listen, if you move anybody in that place and they're not on this lease, I'm evicting you. You know, we know we need to know everybody's living on this property because it's your property. You're the one on the hook for that property. You're responsible. They're just a guest there paying your rent. So, you know, be careful who you rent to. Check them out. Make sure they got the, can afford it. And, uh, but, you know, if you do all that, you should be in good shape. And if you rent to Section 8, then you can kind of go easy on their credit. I always did. I don't care about medical bills. And, you know, people, they're on Section 8 for a reason. If you got the housing that's already backing you up for most of the rent, you can go a little easy on the credit. But you got to be careful and you got to check the criminal history, too. I remember one time uh, we were in Texas. And I went to this big meeting where all these people got their vouchers. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I went to the meeting myself. I flew all the way there because I wanted to get tenants. We had 1,000 units we're trying to keep full. So I'm there, and I'm sending people over to the building. And I met this really, really nice old guy. He seemed like a really nice old gentleman. Just got his voucher. He needs a place. I said, listen, we'll take care of you. Come on over to the building. Go look at the place. I, I felt remember. really good about it. And, um, and what happened was the building called me up, and they said, hey, you know, this guy you sent over here, um, y- y- did you know that he went to jail? He-, he did 20 years for murder? I says, uh, okay, well, you know. You he- asked us how long ago was uh, it? And then I says, so what's wrong with that? I mean, all right, he did it 20 years ago. He-, he committed murder. He did his time and what now? Yeah, but he just got out of jail yesterday. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it's not re- he's not ready to have his own place yet. He just got out of jail yesterday. But anyway, be sure and know who you're renting to. Because they're in your property. So whatever they do reflects on you legally, too. All right, who else you got? Oh, and I did learn most of everything I know from my father. Well, I'm doing it. And from experience. I just threw you in the building when you were like, yeah, I know. And then then when we buy properties, I kind of took over and saw that. But you lived in the building, so you had to live with these people. That's the best thing. All right, how it's Ben. How are you? How can we help you? Hey, Ben. How are you? Pretty good. What's up? Uh, my name is Noah. Um, I live in Chicago. Um, I own uh, two pretty shitty houses I uh, bought for like under 20k. I fixed them up. Now I section eight them for about 
uh, eleven fifty a month, and then the tenants are responsible for you know about a hundred bucks. But um, anyway, uh, I just won this lawsuit, and uh, I'm gonna be getting. It was I got one point eight million. So I gotta give my lawyer a third. So I'm gonna be getting one point one million thirty five thousand like in the next week or two. And basically what I'm wondering is if I should make a jump into something bigger or should I just keep down the same path that's, you know, that I know that it's working. You know, you've done really good with those houses, but you can't buy houses for 20 grand anymore, can you? That market's gone, right? Uh, I bought them both at auction. Yeah, but can you still do it? Uh, yeah, in the town that I in the town that I get them in, yeah, I can. Listen, if you could buy houses for 20,000 bucks and throw some minor repairs into them and make them pass Section 8 inspection and then rent them out for a Thousand grand, bucks a, a, grand month. a month. You're hitting a home run. You're but, paying it um, back in two years. You know, you're, you're positive. So I don't know. I mean, you know, you got to do what's right for you, but it's all about, you know, you got the money. Number one, take that money and put it somewhere safe and where it's getting some sort of return. You know, you definitely need a money manager. You know, I told other people, you know, I, don't, I deal with Merrill Lynch. They're real good to me because that money – that you put in, and you want to make sure you put it in with a place that's willing to loan you money when you do find a real estate deal. Because, like, uh, you know, if you have money in a bank, you know, an investment part of the bank, like Merrill Lynch, then Bank of America, who owns them, is going to give you really good deals because you got money sitting in their bank. So make sure yeah. you put it somewhere you're getting a safe, good return, get a line of credit on it, okay? So while it's earning money, you can run and borrow against it if you had to for a down payment, then yeah. you need to find out what's the best deal out there. You're a smart guy. You know, you're buying houses and doing what you're doing. You need to get an agent and find the best deals, whether it's a house, whether it's a duplex, a fourplex, a tenplex. You know, find the best deal. That's what you got to do. You already know what you're doing. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Maybe you could, you could take that money. Imagine all the houses you could tie up, you know, if you can handle the management of them. You know, imagine all the houses you could tie up with that million bucks, you know. But um, yeah, and then now you can go back and probably refinance a lot of those houses and get all your money back. I'm sure. Yeah, so like the one that I bought for twelve thousand at auction, uh, I did about thirty thousand dollars rehab, and I just got it appraised it's for a hundred and four thousand. Well, there you go. You got you got equity. You got money in the bank. You're living the fucking dream. Pardon my language. You know, you're you're yeah. doing great, and you should be real happy. Um, but you know, take that money, put it away somewhere safe, get it with an investor that's going to put it in preferreds or tax-free bonds or something that you can highly leverage against. So if you do find a yeah, good so deal that, out there, you can, was, you can mortgage, you can borrow against it at a low rate and, um, go and find an agent to work with and see what's on the market or check more auctions out, you know, but, uh, the point is this, any of those houses you bought, they're making your money. So if you keep buying houses, that's great too. You know, uh, I mean, you got to do whatever, wherever, wherever the deal's at, you make the deal. So right. that was uh, like the second second part of my question. Was there for like the 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 tucking away part of it to make like? Is there like something like really safe that I could just put like like five hundred k or like a big chunk in? All right, me personally, I the real me, me personally, what I invest in with the money that I want to protect and I want to bar against it like 90% even, I, I like to stick with tax-free muni bonds. Now, Chicago it was running into some problems for a while, but I own Chicago bonds. The one thing is the credit rating wasn't the greatest, but they will pay. They, they always pay on their muni bonds. You, you want to look into tax-free muni bonds, and you want to look into maybe bank-preferred stock, you know, they're giving decent returns. You need to sit down with a money manager and say, listen, I'm not here to, to gamble in the stock market. I need this money for real estate. I need to be invested in something safe that gives me a modest return, maybe anywhere from three and a half, four, five, six, you know, that I can leverage against with a line of credit. So when I want to find that piece of real estate, I can call you up and say, hey, give me a line, of, give me, give me a couple of hundred grand you know, against those bonds and make sure you negotiate a good rent, a good rate. They shouldn't be charging you any more than 3% uh, borrowing your own against your own investments. But I really highly recommend 
you know, a safe tax-free muni bond type money manager and go with a big firm. Don't fool around these little firms. You know, you want to go with a big name. So if anything ever happens, you got a big name behind you, you know, that's going to have insurance and protect you and all that. So, you know, good luck to you. But you know what you're doing? Keep buying anything yeah. you can that you know you can make money on. You know, you're a smart guy. You can go out and look at a house in five minutes, I bet, and say, okay, if I pay 20 grand for this house and I throw 30 grand into it, I'll be into it for 50 grand, but I can rent it for 1000 a month. That scenario works all day long. Okay? Yeah. So keep doing what you're doing, but look at other deals. Look at bigger deals, but find a broker. Okay? Yep. I appreciate it. All Thank right. You. Good luck to you. Take care. Take it easy. Anybody else? You still got more people? Hey, There's tons of people. <clears throat> Sunday. There's 1,400 people watching right now. Are they really? Yep. 1,400. Well, I hope tell them to close their eyes when the camera goes on you. I don't want them to get hurt. <laughs> You sure you're mine? I'm pretty sure. They're pretty. I mean, thank God I don't look exactly <laughs> like you. People say you look like your dad. I say, oh, my God, please don't insult me. How's it, Tim? Hey, how are you? It's Ben and folks, and we're here. How can we help you? Hey, Ben. How you doing, bud? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, oh. I uh, had a successful exit on a business a couple of years ago in e-commerce and wholesale distribution and... Uh, been pretty conservative with my money, uh, but uh, looking to break out and uh, invest in multifamily. And I guess my question is, what do you think about investing outside the market area you live? So you know, it's uh, okay. It's okay to invest outside the area, but who's going to manage it, and what type of management is needed for that property? You know, if you're talking about triple net deals and stuff like that, you talk about multifamily. And then yeah. how far are you how talking far? about it yeah. out of your area? Are you talking out of state or are you talking somewhere you can drive to? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I possibly out of state, but with, with you know, within driving distance maybe. What state do you live in? Five hours. We're in the Chicago area, so was you know <laughs> We just got off the phone with a guy uh, from Chicago. He's buying houses for twenty grand. But um you know, <laughs> at auction, the, uh, right you know. eight mile. But you know, the thing is this taxes. you know, I highly recommend, you know, I'm the type of person where I like to touch what I own. I like to be there. If an emergency pops up, I can jump on it. I can be there. I can be running it, managing it, leasing it, fixing it, and be involved in all that. So I save a lot of money. You know, we went to Texas once, and, you know, my son had to live there because there was no way I could have managed it without him living there. We would have went broke. So, um, you know, you got to be careful. If you buy something that's a little too big, and then otherwise you got to start using management companies, I mean, I would definitely recommend if it's your first time, try to keep it close to home, you know, because okay. then you got access to it. You're a smart guy. You've done business before. You know, you could be hands-on, be involved, and, and maximize your return on your investment. So, you know, I would okay. be very careful about buying things too far away. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay. Also, what, what and if you're in Chicago, go wow. get a gun license. Do you have to give gun licenses in Chicago? <laughs> Car I, I, they have I, carry I permits? You, I mean, it's our... Yeah, it's a, one of our amendments. You can no, get a gun. No, every state's different. Every state, you can't get a gun? I think every state and city's different. But anyway, be careful. Chicago, really? You know, because, you know, you're going to find your best deals in the toughest neighborhoods. And then, you know, you yeah, might want to think about Section you, 8, you know? Do you, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on buying, uh, uh, you know, buildings that are maybe, maybe more in C areas that need a lot more, you know, value add in terms of investment but can, can give you better cash on cash returns versus – buildings in nicer neighborhoods. I mean, it's going to be tougher to manage. Benefit. It's going to be tougher to manage properties sociably in a social aspect in a rougher neighborhood. That's just life. But you get paid yeah. a little more return when you do. So if you can handle a neighborhood that's a little challenging, you know, then do it. But, you know, if you feel like you can't, then don't. But, you know, if you do go into a C neighborhood, I would definitely try to work with the local, local housing authority because there's a lot of good families that just need help, and they're on Section 8, but they're good families, and they, they have a guarantee from the Housing Authority. And uh, it's a very, if it wasn't for that program, I wouldn't be here today. So, you know, uh, but definitely um, I try to stick to home if it's your first time and get, get your hands dirty and be involved. Yeah, that's great advice. All right, hey, and you have a great for, day. Take thanks care. For all the, thanks for the time. All okay, right, bye. what's the matter? Everybody thinks Aaron don't know how to talk or what? Yeah. 
Aaron knows how to talk. Yeah, he went to the cotillion. Know, he's not, listening. He's learning like I did yeah. when I was a child. Last night he he's went learning. to cotillion and learned how to um, dance with. Oh, yeah. He did the salsa. I danced with 11 girls. Oh, that's more da- that's more girls than I've ever danced with in my life. <laughs> he hey, did it, was, it in one it was, night. It was fun. And you didn't really have to fun. pay the girls like you do. <laughs> you normally pay girls to dance. <laughs> yeah, so but it was fun. Was, yep. What else do they teach you how to eat and talk? Yeah, and etiquette, etiquette. Um, etiquette. You like He's uh, getting all eating. those things, all you never things got. I didn't get. Uh, I got to go to Taco Bell. Yeah. And Burger King, and I got to play in the playground. That was my etiquette. Make sure you take Very your shoes good. off before yeah. you get in the ball pit. But Aaron's going to get in there soon. I'm going to send him over to the hotel and learn him how to clean Oh, we got a caller, too. Hi, how are you? It's Ben. How can we help you? Hey, uh, I just had a question. So I have a single-family home, and it's paid off. Um, I don't know if I should do a home equity line of credit or a cash-out refi. Okay, well, you know, it depends on what you're going to do with the money. If you don't have nowhere to put that money right now, why put interest on it? Why start paying interest and then you got to have to stick the money somewhere? I mean, if you don't need the money, do the HELOC, HELOC, Home Equity Line of Credit. Okay, because this way the money's sitting there and it's there when you need it, but you don't start paying interest on it until you touch it. So, but if you got a deal that you want to sink that money into, then grab all the money and put it into the deal you're going to buy. But, you know, uh, that's the, basically, that's it. You know, if you don't need it, get the HELOC. And make sure you get the lowest rate you can. All right? All right. Thank you very much, Ben. All right. Good luck. Take care. Aaron, you want yeah. a HELOC? I'm going to lock you up. What does HELOC stand for, Mr. Mallow? Home equity line of credit. It's where the homeowner can basically just get a line of credit on their house. So let's say your house is worth 200000 You go to the bank, they give you a, a HELOC, a loan on a credit, of whatever, 90% maybe. It could be 180000 um, or whatever. And then the money's sitting there, and anytime you want to use it, you write a check. It's like a checking account. And then if you write that check, they're going to take money from that HELOC, and they're going to start charging you interest. But you only borrow it as you need it. It's just sitting there waiting for you. So, you know, that works for a lot of people. And if you don't need it, don't borrow it. <coughs> okay, what do we got? We got a ring, a ring, ring, ring. What else we got going on? Tomorrow, I'm going to go meet with a big shot in retail. That's good. <laughs> HELOC and then hit Vegas. I like that comment. HELOC and hit Vegas. <laughs> yeah, you go home, you go home broke. I think they I do mean, HELOCs yeah. in Vegas for yeah. you. Anybody gambles <laughs> for more than recreational, uh, I don't know. I ain't got the guts. Yeah. You know, you go there, you blow a grand, whatever. Don't, don't gamble with money you can't afford to gamble with. What happened? No phone call? They didn't answer. They, didn't answer. they don't nope. want to answer you. Next caller. You do not accept Polish phone calls. <laughs> we got to change your phone. He's my phone. So what else we got going on? We got to close uh, some more. We got to close the apartment building. Putting some deals on the market here. We got to finish that Oh, yeah, that we're up. taking how many buildings to the market? Four, five piggies to the market. Four or five. Portland. You got... Country Manor, you got Valencia, Valencia, and Orchard Park. And then what about the other one? Which one? Oh, Park Crest. Park Crest. It's hey, five, five little piggies to the market. Some. Yep. And one big piggy's taking five to the market. Whoa. You're the piggy. I All right. It. We got anybody? Hello. Hi. How are you? It's Ben. How can we help you? Hey, don't worry, Ben. Um, I just wanted to ask a quick question. So my father passed away about a year ago, and he left me out with some properties and cash. But I don't know what to do with them. Um, my properties are in Mexico, you know. We have a, a ranch that is about like three okay. acres. And I don't know if I should deal and rent it. I lately I've seen people doing Airbnb type of stuff. Did uh, you say, all right, number one, I'm sorry, your father, I'm sorry your father passed away. Um, but did you say the properties are in Mexico? Yes. So like the other country, Mexico? Mexico? What's up? They're in another country, Mexico. Yeah. And you, uh, and you live here. Chicago, and, like, and where do you live? We are in California. California. So let me ask you this. Uh, are these properties making you any money right now? He's airbnb in them. Well, that's the thing. So he left me equity in order for me to, you know, like look into the future. But I mean. Are you still there? Did we lose him? 
Hello? Maybe his cell phone. All right, well, yeah. if you can hear me, all I can tell you is if I had property in Mexico, I'd sell it. Imagine managing property in this country is hard enough. It depends on what type of Mexico. Uh, if he's if he's close to the border uh, and there's some type of tourism, I watched and the he's news. getting Airbnb. I, ain't invested in Mexico. I was watching a program the other day about a guy who's you know they say all this stuff on the news about Mexico and how bad the border is, and this guy did a program and he showed us how nice that area really was. And I mean, and the news takes it out. Yes, there's nice and bad in every area. Um, I don't know. I you never know. There's a tourism area. Drug deals are now picking on the avocado farmers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's getting it's ridiculous. Bad. So I don't. I don't like being in countries or operating countries where I don't feel like I'm going to be treated fairly. And you know, there's corruption. I'm sorry. You know. But anyway, good luck to him. And if I was you, I'd sell, sell, sell. Oh. Get that well, money. They're telling you to stop talking. They're pushing the button. Like stop talking. Who? The caller. You got okay. a caller on the phone. Hello. Sorry. Hey, how it's been? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. How can we help you? Um. Well, I just want to say thank you for everything, but I'm 21 right now in college in Texas. So I do have a job lined up, and I'm about to save around $40,000 a year. So I was looking to get into student housing, or should I save up and get into commercial? Have you graduated college? Um, I'm three months away. So three months away. Today. Congratulations. Um, thank you. I mean, you know... You got to go wherever you see this opportunity. You know, I like student housing. I mean, you know, because the students need a place to live. And if there's a demand yeah. for it and you know what it's like to be a student uh, and you already have that, you know, you had to operate in a college atmosphere, then, you know, it could very well work for you, you know. And then, like you said, you know, you can, you can buy even a house with four bedrooms in it and rent it out by the bedroom. I mean, you know, that's the beauty of student housing. And, and when students leave, there's always more students coming, uh, you know, and then make sure you get the parents to guarantee the lease. But, um, I okay. mean, you know, it's, it depends on where the deal is at. You got to figure out what's going to make your money. You know, if you can buy uh, property and convert it to student housing, um, then that's a home run. You know, other types mm -hmm. of, you know, it depends. What was the other type of real estate you mentioned? Uh, commercial. Like what? So retail? To... You mean like retail? Yeah, retail. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, retail's tricky. You know, there's not a lot of, you know, the guys who make their money in retail is when they take something and turn it into nothing. I mean, take nothing and turn it into something. <laughs> like, yeah, like, you know, when they take an empty space, you know, it ain't got much value to it in retail. Uh, but when you can fill that space, that's where you make your money. You know, uh, okay. so... Uh, retail, you got to know what you're doing. You got to have some connections, you know. But uh, I like the student housing thing because, like I said, if you're close to a university and you can fill it up with students, then you're going to be making money, you know. Um, but yeah. you got to go wherever the deal's at, you know. If it's a small apartment building you found that, that makes sense, you just got to make sure the numbers work. That's the most important thing. The money coming in okay. exceeds the money going out and leaves some sort of reasonable profit. It's simple. But you know, I definitely I look did, at the student housing the aspect. What 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 college? Texas A and M. Yes, sir. All right. Well, Texas A so, and M is a great school, you know, and mm -hmm. it has a lot of students. And I'm sure there's always students looking for a good deal. You know, you might be able to undercut the competition. You know, if you find a good deal, that's the thing. Um, okay. So you know, definitely look into the student housing aspect. I would definitely look into that. Okay. Okay. Good luck to you. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Just to the comments, I think Aaron almost knows how to yeah, fly the jet. Yeah, actually, I really do. I was about to say, well, I, I think I Aaron already knows how to fly I'm, the jet. You're actually, saying Aaron needs to learn how to I'm fly planning, the jet for I'm you. I'm planning, I actually do want to get my pilot's get, license. Can you get your pilot's license before you get your driver's license? You can get it. I looked it up. I think it was like 16 or something. That's like what you should do. I know. I actually, That would be cool. Because I fly the 414 and I've landed it. It's not, it's hard, but it's not really that hard. I mean, he's got like, somebody sitting next to exactly. him. Exactly. You know, but it, it, it's really I notice a big difference learn. on the plane when the pilot lets him take controls. Yeah, there's yeah. a big yeah. difference between yeah. him flying and a pilot. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Okay, uh, but he needs to take the courses and do the training and all that. If he wants yeah. to do that, but um, you know, go for it. Meanwhile, um, 16 to fly a jet. Wow, I don't even know cool. if he can. That would be cool. I don't even know how he, how good he can ride his bicycle. Forget about part of the plane. He can what? ride a bike. I know he can ride, ride a bike. bike. I never see him take the bike out. 
Dad, I literally just took my That's bike because out we with do Matt. motorcycles. We don't Ooh. need bikes, motorcycles, Ooh. and dirt bikes. I, and I just Polaris took my bike out. You guys like to like... start at the top and work your way down. That's the problem. It's Hello, this so is Connor. Easy. Hey, Connor, Connor, how are you? How you it's doing? Ben. How are you doing? How can we help you today? Oh, my God, Ben. Hey! hey! How are you doing? We're here. Don't We're here. The table. <laughs> how are you? I'm, uh, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Pretty good. How can we help you today? I just wanted to know. Okay, I... um. I have, I've been doing this for about four, four years now. Um, I want to quit my job and do this full time, but do you think I should take on investors cash to, uh, charge fees, do other ways to make money on their money, opposed to just doing it a hundred percent ourselves? You know, a lot of people take other people's money, you know, and I don't because, you know, I don't want to be there, but, you know, if that if you feel strong about really doing the right thing with that money and you can make money with their money and then you get your fees off of it, you know, it's definitely a lucrative business. There's, there's, there's a lot of people doing it, you know, there's multi-billion dollar companies that do it, um, you know, and if you don't have a lot of money yourself, it definitely puts you into bigger deals when you got all that money backing you up, so... You know, uh, as long as your intentions are good and, you, and you're not going to hurt nobody, you know, and you're going to give a return to your investors, then, yeah, take their money. But, um, you know, make sure you do everything to where, you know, if it does go sour, they can't come back and cry to you either, you know. They got to know, hey, everything's got risk. But um, what do you? Yeah. What kind of work are you doing now? Uh, just, uh, we, I have 112 units. Um, we're basically buying distressed properties. Um, and then we're just trying to refinance them out. Is that your job? Um, I mean, what is your job right now? You say you're going to quit your job. Oh, oh yeah, I sell, I sell uh, insurance. Oh, you sell insurance. Commercial insurance? Uh, yeah. No, yeah, I could insure. If you wanted, uh, I could insure all your pro uh, properties, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, it's good for you that you sell insurance because you know how to get the best deal and you know about coverages. So you got something to bring to the table for your investors, too. <clears throat> but, oh yeah, um, you know, I um, mean, if, you, if you're already into 112 units, how many partners are in that? How many investors? Uh, just me, my brother, and my dad. Oh, so it's just you three. That's great. So yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, um, you know, you want to refinance and go find another deal. That's that's the automatic, you know, normal thing that people do. Once that 112 units are stabilized and you can pull some money out of it, you need to go try to do it again. How much upside do you have in that 112 units? How much equity did you build up? Um, we got a lot of equity, to be honest with you. I think I could pull out, uh, 1.2 million in, um, between the 28 unit and the 36 unit. The th how we got those is, um, we only put $6,900 down to buy the 30 unit and we cashed out on a, a Fannie or a Freddie. I don't know which one we did, mm -hmm. but, um, my brother handles that part of it. Um, but we got $1.1 $1 .1 million in the cash out. So we bought the one uh the 36 and the 28 with that so we're kind of at like a point right now where we can't grow <clears throat> until we refinance one of those two well you know i'm a firm believer if you, if my mind is set on buying more property i always borrow as much as i can you know as long as i'm sure i can make the payment and everything you know but uh, you need to get as much money as it's you your brother and your father you guys need to stash as much money as you can to get as much money as you can out of your properties and then go out there and find another deal. And then it just keeps recycling. You just keep finding more deals and you keep refinancing, you know, and that's, that's how you grow, you know? So I would cash out every dime I could providing you can take that money and find another deal. You can make more money on. When you do your loans, do you have like prepayment penalties in them at all? You um, know, I, I typically hate prepayment penalties, but, if it means, like, if you already know that you're going to need to keep this property at least a year or two to get it stabilized and fixed up, and you know you're not going to be able to refinance it, you know you're not going to sell it, a prepayment penalty, if it gets you a better rate or better terms, then, yeah, I could swallow a one- to two-year prepayment penalty. But I don't like those Fannie Freddie long-term ones because those things, you know, and then – they have these other ones where we have to. We there buy, is no prepayment penalty. They just say well, they're guaranteed. The interest is guaranteed for that ten. Well, years. that's a different type of loan. A lot, a lot of them. It. A lot of them have what they call a defeasance clause, where they're saying, "Listen, you want to pay us off anytime during the entire term of this twenty or thirty year loan, 
we're guaranteed all that interest in the future, then you got to go out and it becomes a big mess to get rid of that loan. You got to buy bonds, you got to do a defeasance. I try to only, if you're going to do a prepayment penalty, make sure it's only for a very short period of time to let the bank know, yes, you're at least good for a year or two. Anything past that, I'd be very careful because it's going to prevent you from refinancing or selling without paying a huge penalty. So, you know, it's all about the terms, you know. If you can get good terms yeah. without the prepayment penalty, I, I, I always try to take a property without any penalties. Do you, can you refinance properties before two years? Yes. Do you ever do that? Yes. Do you do that? Yes. I mean, some okay, banks may – some see, every bank has their own kind of set of rules that, that are kind of came up with uh, – that's by their board. Every bank has a board of directors, and they have these rules. Some banks may say, listen, if a guy doesn't own a property at least two years, we're not loaning the money. Typically, that's the small banks that are real worried. But there's a lot of banks out there – uh, technically, you could buy a property and own it for one month and go out and refinance it. It depends on you and the bank. You know, there's really, to my knowledge, there's no laws that, that say you have to. It's just bank policy. So, okay. you know, sit down with a yeah. bank. And if one bank doesn't want to, if one bank says, no, you haven't earned it long enough, then go to another one. But, you know, uh, there's no, to my knowledge, there's no law that says, you know, if you buy if you buy a property for, for even cash, you know what's to stop you from going out and refinancing the next month? Nothing, you know. It's just yeah, like no, a purchase loan. That. So that's when you do you, a, that's what you do a lot when you do a purchase loan, you didn't own the property and loan your money. Why can't you loan it to me after I owned it six months? It makes no sense. Well, it's bank policy. All right. Well, I'll move on to another bank. That's what I tell them. <laughs> so you know, um, keep away from long term prepayment penalties, and you can go out and take every dime you can out of those properties and find the next deal. All right. Good luck to you. All right, thank you. Good luck, Take too. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Also, you guys, if you guys are a caller, please lower your volume on whatever you're listening to us on because it is causing feedback. And we would hate for your uh, viewers to uh, uh, be interfered with the quality of audio. Listen, you feed back. You feed front. You feed yourself any way you can. Hey, do me a favor. Can you give me some more Diet Pepsi, please, son? I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. There's no more Red Bulls. All right. You know, why are you drinking it? It's full of sugar. Are you crazy? Because I need it after. <laughs> I need it right Hello? now. Hey, it's Ben. How you doing? How can we help you? Hey, this is awesome, Ben. How are you? Hey, how you guys doing? Pretty, pretty good, good. Pretty good. Hey, uh, I'll try to get uh, to the point here. Um, I was just wondering what your thoughts are on uh, foreclosed, on tax foreclosed properties. You know, I think, and I'm not an expert, all right, but when it comes to tax foreclosures, I believe every state, maybe even county, are different the way they do it. I know here in Florida, you can pay the taxes. It goes on who wants to offer the lowest rate is how you pay for them. On ta- people that don't pay their ta- property taxes, you like bid the lowest interest rate that you're willing to take uh, during the time that you're waiting to see if they pay the taxes or not. And then if they eventually don't pay them after like so many years, then it goes up for auction and you either get your money back or you have an opportunity to buy the property. I mean, it's pretty complicated for me. I've never done any. I've been to the auctions. I've never done any, but I know there's money to make in it, but I think you have to wait yeah. it out a long time sometimes to see if you ever yeah. get the property. I've, I've, I've actually bought a couple of them through there, but I just feel like when I sell them, I'm just not sure if it's, like, good and clear. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, I mean, property taxes come before anything. So, yeah. well, like, I, if the I, bank I, doesn't I pay, that yeah, that's why the banks will, will, will verify every loan they got to verify the taxes uh-huh. are being paid because that comes before the mortgage, you know. I mean, yeah. so I can't imagine you not getting clear title when you buy a prop, yeah. a tax property from a county. But it sounds like you know what you're doing. So did you actually take possession of those properties you bought from a tax sale? Yeah, they've given me the title after about two to three months or the deed. What state is that? Where Where is this at? Uh, Texas, South Texas. Okay, South well, South, uh, so you be you you bid on a property and uh, yeah, and then you actually after you win the auction, you actually get the property. Yeah, well, that's great. Very yeah, good. You just, you just have to pay the taxes that they want you to pay. Sometimes they'll settle for three to four years. Right. Uh, I think the catch is that uh, on land alone, you have to wait six months because they have a redemption period, right? 
And I think if it's a non-homestead house that you buy, it's up to a year where the people that can come back and buy it back pretty much at a, at a interest, higher interest rate that you paid, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot so of rules to that stuff. That's what I thought. But if you yeah, there's a lot of if rules. you were able to buy some and make money on them, then keep doing it. But you know, I'm sure yeah. don't you do you deal with a title company at all? Get get you clear title. You have title insurance. See, that's the thing. No, I haven't done that to any of my property. I mean, when they sell them, like them to that. you, they're selling them to you a clear title, aren't they? Don't they They're wipe out everything? General deed. Well, you know, I would I would definitely sit down and, and, and take one of your properties and say, hey, you know, can you give me a title search on this place? You know, have have a title company or a lawyer, somebody run a title search and make sure that it's yeah. all clean in case you want to sell it. Good you know, you need to consult with a title company and, and make sure you got clean title. And if there is something dirty on there, it should okay. come off. It's like a bankruptcy. It wipes it. everything out. Just clean it out. Try to clean it out. Make sure all your title is clean because if you want to sell it or borrow against it, you got to have a clean yeah. title. So, you cool. know, but keep doing what you're doing. It sounds like it's working, you know, but get clear title. I, I have a second question for you real quick. Um, I hear you say that you can get loans through the bank at like 3% interest or something like that. But every time I go to the bank and ask for a loan as an investment, everybody wants 20 to 25% down. I mean, that's, that's typical. Uh, 20% down is typical. The 3% typical. was the interest rate he was 3%, talking about. No, well, 3% is with the interest rates are in the threes right now if you negotiate. But 3% down is FHA only. And that's for a single that's family. Or under One four. four. Yeah, under four. <laughs> but even if it's for like an investment property? You can buy one to four units with uh, FHA. Five or more is commercial, and typically you're going to put 20% down. Don't you have to own or occupy, Unless, though, or unless no? now, the, huh? Don't you have I to own or occupy? Yeah, one year. You're supposed to own or occupy yeah, for one year. Own or occupy for yeah. one year. So if you buy a fourplex, you have to stay in one of the units. You have to live yeah. in one of the units. It has yeah, to be your primary address. All right, yeah, well, but if you're yeah, talking but, commercial, you, know, you can go to a bank, and it depends on the loan to value you're trying to get. If you find a really good okay. deal, you know, if you find a really good deal on a house, you know, and and you don't need to borrow, uh, you know, 80, 80%, then, you know, you don't have to put down 20%. But typically, oh, okay. any commercial deal is going to require 20% down. You know, they're going to have 80% skin in the game. You're going to have yeah. 20% skin in the game. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's yeah. just the way that's it is. I keep running into. Well, you know, well, are you having trouble raising the, yeah. uh, are you having trouble yeah. raising the 20%? Well, yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm the head of household. I'm the only one that works. My wife doesn't work. But what's the story with the houses you bought? What about the houses you bought at the tax sale? Well, see, that weren't, they weren't that expensive. I mean, they're like uh, the first one I bought was like seven thousand. It was a, it was a little piece of land. Cleaned it up. It was ugly. Cleaned it up. Sold it for like fifteen. So I made some money off of that. But try to, I've been trying to pay bad debts. You know pay all my bad debts and trying to get into good debt. So Sounds like you need to keep worth. flipping tax sales because it seems like you know what you're doing and you're making money at it. If you can double your money on a piece of land in Texas, then you need to start keep trying to do that as much as you can. You know, you still got some okay. money to put down on, on a tax sale, right? Yeah. Yeah, I keep trying yeah, to flip yeah. it until you get enough money to buy a big chunk of real estate, you know, with a big 20% down payment like, you know, you need two hundred on every yeah. million, but uh, or whatever. Yeah. You know, half a million, you need a hundred. So you know, keep flipping those tax sales and keep making that money and stocking that money. Cool. Yeah. We'll or if you, you buy, or if you buy, I don't know. You know, if you buy one of these pieces of land cheap enough, you know, can you can you throw a, a manufactured or a modular house on it and flip it or rent it or something yeah. or what? Yeah. Well, yeah. then you yeah, look at you know can. before you sell that land for seven grand profit. Maybe you can go and even finance a, a house through a, a manufactured uh, dealership, uh, you know, and put a house on there and sell it and, and make an even bigger yeah, chunk of money. Yeah, I thought about doing that. Yeah. You know, think about doing that. All right, well, good luck yeah, to you. Cool. Keep doing it. Keep making money. Hey, by the way, uh, I make some badass barbecue. Whenever I go to Florida, I'll cook for you guys. I'll Texas take barbecue. I love Texas barbecue. Hell yeah. I don't Hell know. Yeah. When he lived in Texas, he took me to a goddamn train car, turned into a barbecue joint. No name barbecue. No name barbecue, and I uh, wasn't impressed. Hey, those are the best ones. Yeah. It sure is. Right off of uh, 225 yeah. in Pasadena. Oh, good luck Pasadena. to you, okay? All right. Hey, take thanks care. For thanks the call, a lot. Guys. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. All oh. right. You got anybody else? You got anybody else? When's Aaron going to buy a piece of real estate? How old? You don't. You gotta be eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah 18. but I can sign for him. 
You got to be 18. Oh, well, I can you have can it. put it in a trust. Yeah, we're well, trusting a, you. Don't trust me. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, we don't want to go there. You no could. fighting today. Anyway, um, I don't know. You can't buy real estate until yeah, you're it has 18. Yeah, you to be 18. Oh, right? but he, yeah, oh, he, I give him a pound tire. Hello, how are you? It's Ben. How can we help you? Are you there? Hello? I think we lost him. Hello? It sounds like a spirit. <laughs> are you there? Okay, next caller. All right. We got work to do ourselves today. We got income expense mm -hmm. reports to do. We got to work with brokers. I got two hotels I'm trying to sell. Got to have our shit together. It's time for you to start working for a living. Who? You. Hello. Aaron. Hey, I'm how ready. are you? It's Ben. How can we help I'm you? Um, so I had a question for you. Um, if you. Do you recommend pulling equity out and constantly invest it in a new property or pull equity out? And leave it in your bank to build your net worth. I mean, you know, as long as you have a place to invest the money, you know, I mean, you don't want to pull money out of a property and let it just sit there and, and pay pay interest on it if you're not doing nothing. Because then you got to worry about reinvesting it somewhere to make up for the interest. So, you know, you need to find a deal and then pull the money out as you need it. That's why you're talking about barn against a house or a commercial property? Uh, commercial. Well, I'm multi-unit. Multi-unit. I mean, I don't know if they do. I don't. They don't do HELOCs on commercial, but they will. I don't know if you get a line of credit on commercial property. You have to talk to your banker, but you know you should be find the deal is what's the most important thing. Once you find that deal, you know if you got to rush and refinance your property, then rush and refinance it. You know, unless you know this deal's out there, you can jump on and refinance it now. Have the money. And then make the deal. But it's all about knowing where to put the money. You don't want money just sitting around earning no interest or paying interest on it, you know? So do you have any deals you can buy right now? Right now. Can you put a deal on the table to buy? No. So I live where you used to invest. I live in Oakland now. I have stuff <laughs> in Jersey, but I live in Oakland next to Mills College, and the prices here are out. Oh, man, let me tell you so. something. Is, let me ask you a question. Is that sandwich shop... And, and Seminole still there Seminole when they make the steak right? and cheese sandwiches by the Chevron behind the gas station. Yeah, is that place Hon still there? Honest I, honestly, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm oh, a Jersey man. guy living out here now with my wife. You got to so go to that shopping sure. center on Seminary and see if Seminary. That, okay. That's what it was. Seminary, yeah, Seminary. not Ma Seminole. Seminary and MacArthur Boulevard. That is the best sandwich, steak sandwich you get in your <laughs> life. At least it was back then. But um, you know. I mean, you know, basically, it's very expensive. I mean, if we would have stayed there, we would be we would be very very well off today. But you know, I didn't like the the, the I didn't like where I lived. I didn't like California. But did, you know, did that, you live? Did you did you sell before the boom? Yeah, I sold. I, well, I sold in two thousand and three and four. Oh. So you know, I okay. kind of I did good because I bought when it was really cheap, and I I made a nice profit. But the stuff that I sold is now worth like. Three or four times what I sold for, but you know, yeah, the, it, it was more a personal. The house that move. we live, the house that we live in, the previous owner bought it for one ninety eight. We paid six fifty three for the same house a few yeah. years later. I just said three times. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I bought a house for half a million on Skyline Boulevard up there in the hills. I bought it for five hundred, and I, I sold it for a million when I left. But yeah, um, they're going for like three on the hills. Yeah, I know. Prices have gone crazy, and taxes are very high, and that's why I felt like California wasn't the place for me. But um, so you got to really look hard for a bargain, you know, up there, you know, so. You Do know, you think there's a correction in real estate coming soon? Yeah, it has to be a correction. You know, things just don't make, the prices are getting ridiculous. It gets to the point now where, you know, rents are going to have to stop going up because they don't make any sense. And um, interest rates are, are not going to stay low forever. I mean, it's just a matter of time. But right now the economy is doing really good and we're in overtime. So we just got to wait it out. Sometimes you just got to wait it out. You know, but there's always distressed deals out there. It's just harder to find. You got to spend more time looking for a distressed deal than you did before. You know, but I used to be on the courthouse steps in Oakland buying uh, real estate. But um, you know, at the auctions. Yeah, I, I you, know, they were, you know foreclosure auctions. But um, you know, prices are crazy where you're at right now. So I, I don't know. It's going to be very, very difficult we, for you to find a deal. We 
we own a few things in uh, in Patterson, New Jersey, also. So uh -huh. that's where we're going to continue looking. Well, you know, if that's where you feel comfortable and you feel, you, it's all about the return. You know, it's real simple in real estate. You're either going to get a good return on your investment or you're not. You know, but right now it's very hard to find properties that have upside in them. You know, it used to be in the old days. Oh, you buy something for a hundred grand and you fix it up and you clean it up and you rent it out and it's worth two hundred grand. It's impossible to find those right now. It's the economy. But um, just, you know, if Patterson, New Jersey is where your comfort zone is at and you think you can get good returns, and keep doing it there. But uh, Mills and College, you're not going to Mills College. That's a girls' college. You can't go there. <laughs> we, we're right across the street from it. Oh, yeah, that's a nice place to is be. Is my holy names? No. Holy no. names we're, is down for off, We're off of uh, Seminary. Seminary of MacArthur. Mm. I know, right by the 580 freeway, right, right at the foot of the Oakland Hills. I lived there, Montclair. I know the whole area. It was a great area. Had a building up, you know, at the top but um, the keep looking, you know, you never know, but the market will change soon, but go back to Patterson and, if you have to for right now. And my final question is just real quick. What are the benefits? I, I always hear you mention uh, interest only loans. Is that beneficial if you're planning to sell as soon as you're done repairing it? I like interest only loans because I want the cash flow. I don't want to buy down the money I borrowed. I borrowed the money. I want to pay you the interest. And I want the most I can uh, uh, get every month so I have cash flow to reinvest in other deals and other properties and fix them up. You know, to me, it's all about how much you're making at the end of the month, you know. Uh, and when the terms are up on the interest loan, what do you do then? Before the interest only period is up, I typically refinance it or I sell it. Depends on how good the property is, if I want to keep it or I want to sell it, move on to the next one. So, like I said, six months before your interest only period is up, or at least four months before, you need to go back to the bank and say, listen, you know, uh, I don't want to take this loan to another bank, so I need you to extend my interest only period, or I want to refinance, or if you don't want to help me, I'm moving on to the next bank. Uh, it's just, you know, it's what you got to do. I had, a, I, I had a banker leave his position at my bank, and, and I got screwed because while he was leaving, he was supposed to refinance my hotel. I got a mortgage bill the other day with a principal payment is a hundred thousand dollars a month. I gotta I gotta come out the pocket now a hundred grand more a month to pay down principal in a hotel that I don't need to pay that money down. For what? The damn place is worth thirty million bucks. So um, you know, I believe in interest only. Get it as long as you can and before it runs out, refinance or sell a property, whichever works for you. All right, you take care, okay. have a great day. Thank you very Stay much. away from those girls at Mills College. All right. I'm a married man, but thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, you better definitely stay away. <laughs> All right, good luck to you. Go check out the steak sandwich shop. I hope that was real meat because it was like they gave you too much steak in that damn sandwich. It was Sometimes good. I wonder if it was buffalo the or cheese and all yeah. the. They mixed it up on that dirty grill. Oh, that dirty grill was the best. <laughs> Flavor up that dirty grill. You love Boy, it. I tell you can taste it today. You were a kid when you were eating them. I fed you off of that place. Right all right, the, what do we got? Another caller? Models. All right. Aaron goes to Firehouse now. That's what we ate before we got yeah, here. It was good. Yeah, it was it really wasn't good. as good as that other it one. Was. I tell hey, you. it's Ben. How are you? How can we help you? Nope, nobody there. It's still ringing. I got a ring and two ding-a-lings. I don't want to. I'm, I'm Ben Jr. I don't know which time. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hi, it's Ben and uh, Sons, and we're here. How can we help you? Can somebody get that? Oh, ben, Ben, first I just want to say thank you for all you do. Uh, thanks for all the advice you give. It's awesome. Uh, secondly, I want to say that uh, my family, so it's my, my brother, my sister, my aunt, and my uncle, we inherited, um, I would say maybe 29 properties from my grandmother uh, who passed away. Um, they're so rest in peace. And, um, you know, some of the houses need repair. We're at the point now where we're kind of strapped. You know, there's not a whole lot of money. Um, there's not a whole lot of education as well. I think I may be the only one who has some education into what to do next, but we just kind of trying to figure out, you know, what our next step is. Well, you know, you got a situation there that you got to step in and you got to come up with a plan. I mean, you know, uh, you, you're very fortunate. Your grandma left you all these places. It's great. She must have been a real smart lady. Um, yeah. So number one, you, you're gonna have to. Uh, you got cash flow on these properties that they rented out. What's the story? Well, none of them are rented out at all, and all of them need repair. Um, oh you know, 29 of them? And there's no mortgage on any of them. Your, your grandma left you 29 empty houses? 
Well, no, there's nine houses and, and there's 20 pieces of property. Okay, so and none of them are rented generating cash flow? None of them at all. During her later latter years, um, and I, you know, she was real stubborn. You know what I'm saying? She really wouldn't, uh, you know, she wouldn't listen too much. But, you know, as far as repairs, she did a whole lot of patchwork and never just repaired it like it should have been. And so, you know, the houses are kind of in the state where they kind of really need some repair. Well, I know one of the houses is, um, you know, at the stake of being con it was condemned now. And so, we, you know, we received some information that, you know, they've given us some time to, uh, to settle as far as the estate is concerned before they be trying to move in and truly condemning the house. I'd sell it. I mean, if you don't have the money to fix them up and they're not in good shape where a bank's not going to want a loan on them, you know, it sounds like you need to package it all up together or separately or any way you can and try to get the most money you can for selling them. And, 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 and you know, I mean, that that's the first thing that comes to mind. If you don't have the money to go around and, and the time and the, the resources to fix up 29 different properties or nine houses and get them fixed up and get them rented or, you, or sell them, Maybe you need to sell them in a the condition they're in, you know, and just uh, let the next person go in there, buy them where they can fix them up and, and, and try to deal with them. Maybe try to keep right. the cream of the crop, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if there's some you want to keep, you know, that you think you can fix up or the ones with the the best value or the most equity, that, you know, that work. Best neighborhoods, things like that. You know, maybe pick out the winners and get rid of the dogs. But, you know, otherwise, you know, if you added them all up, have you have you sat down and looked at what the realistic price on the value of each par parcel is? Yes, I, I, I did that last week, and I think it came up to like a million seven five for all the real estate total. Okay, so let me let me ask you this. A million seven, you said? Yeah, a million seven. Okay, so now, number one, now correct me if I'm wrong, and consult with an accountant. If you take a million seven, and your family has to split it up any whatever way, isn't that all tax free? Because uh, you you can leave people uh, up to like uh, five million, I think, uh, where they don't have to pay tax. So isn't if you if you, you need to talk to the lawyer and the accountants and say, listen, if we just dump all this property, cash it in for a million seven, split it up the way your grandma told us to, is it tax free? That's what you need to do, I think. Take all well, that. Well, the downside, the downside to that is, is you know, her last wishes. You know, she looked me di like directly into my eyes, and she's like, you know, you're the only one with some knowledge because I've done some some wholesale deals. I live in Atlanta. I've done some wholesale deals in Atlanta and properties in North Carolina, and she's aware of, you know, my wholesale deals and you know, kind of where my knowledge was with things. And she looked me in my eyes and she said, "I bought this stuff for your children's children. Please don't sell." So that's the tough part. Well, but the question is. What can you do with the money if you did sell? Could you do really good things for your kids and your family? Or if you're in the wholesale business, you know, you should be able to flip them, you know, I mean, to, to wholesalers and get them quick money. And it all depends on what you're going to do with the money. You know, how many people are going to split that million seven? Oh, they're going to, if, if they get money, they'll be broke quick. So, <laughs> well, and, you know, is me, that the way she set up? Money. Is that the way she set it up where everybody gets paid out or what? Or everybody gets their. No, well, the, the tough the tough part about that is she actually didn't even have a will. Hmm. You know, so. I know she wants those, those properties. You know, you can't be sentimental when it comes to real estate. You know, yeah. you know, so, I mean, I don't see anything. I don't, if you don't have the money to fix them up, what are you going to do? Maybe you could take some of them, and and I mean, if you got to fix up some of them to be able to pull money out of them with, with a bank, you know, are any yeah. of them in rentable condition? No, I mean, you know, if you can't rent yeah. them, you can't get in there and rent some of them. You can't rent the nine houses out. Take too much money to fix them up. Yeah, that's the that's that's kind of the problem. I mean, for <laughs> me, I, I I feel like I can come up with some money to do it, but there's so many other parties in yeah. place. How many parties all together? How many people all together are after that money? So, so, so my it was so there was my mother, my my aunt, and my uncle. My mother passed away, so my mother's third goes to me, my brother, and my sister. So, so technically, there's what's what's that? Five people total. You my know, uncle doesn't need anything. You know, he he's he's well off. My you know what I would really try to do? I try to do this if I was you, because you're the smart one. I try to tell everybody, listen, let's all stick together. Let's sell these properties off, and then you go out and try to reinvest that money to make everybody more money. I mean, you know, put together some sort of partnership with them. Oh, and maybe you the know? uncle, he said the uncle's pretty well off. Maybe we can come up with some capital. Hey, the uncle, I want to loan you no money to fix him up. That's what I was thinking. 
Nah, I think my uncle's gonna just die, duck out of all of this. Yeah, right. yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> but I mean, you know, listen, your grandmother, I'm sure, only wanted everybody to to be, to, to be happy. So, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like you have any choice but to sell them. What are you going to do? Sit around and keep paying taxes and and their and insurance or whatever on on properties that aren't generating any income? I mean, they have yeah, no that's no that's cash flow. They're not even bringing in any kind of money to pay their bills or taxes or insurance or nothing. Nothing. Yeah, you got to dump nothing. I'm yeah, sorry. If you ain't got the money to fix them up, you need to get. You need to get. You're in the wholesale business. You know what you can dump those properties for. You need to get those yeah. properties sold and and maybe try to convince everybody to keep that money pooled together so you all can grow together. You know that's what I would try to do. But you're yeah. stuck between a rock and a hard place. What are you gonna do? You all these properties are not bringing in no money. They're costing you money. They, and then what are you yeah. gonna do when you gotta come out of the pocket to keep the properties? It makes no sense. You know it's a different it day and time. And you know. Don't worry, Grandma ain't gonna come back and get you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you better, you better, you're a wholesaler. You better wholesale those suckers and get your hands on the cash. Convince everybody, all parties involved. Listen, we're gonna take all the money that we're gonna sell them for, and we're gonna build our own real estate investment, uh, you know, Team. partnership. And you're gonna go out and you're gonna find more bad deals to buy and cheap and flip them and wholesale them. Imagine, yeah. imagine what you could do with that million seven if you were out there as a wholesaler, uh, you know, buying stuff for quick cash money, getting discounts, and then flipping them for a profit, you know? Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. You don't have to just flip the contract. You can buy the real estate yourself, cut out the middleman, and then flip the contract. Uh, not flip the contract, flip the property, yeah. you know? So it. that's what I would do. All right, well, yeah, good luck to awesome. you, and uh, take care. I appreciate you guys, man. You guys are awesome. All right, go sell those properties. Make that money. <laughs> All right, Thanks. good luck. Bye bye. Do 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 do. I don't care. I mean, if you got people that want to talk, we'll talk. You know, we're here to help people. Can't say we didn't try to help anybody. You know, at least people have somebody to talk to. You know, sometimes they already know the answer. They just want to have somebody to discuss it with. You know. Got a caller. Hi, how are you? It's Ben. How can we help you? I'm great. How are you, Ben? Pretty good. What can we do for you? Well, first of all, I want to say that this is, I can't believe I'm talking to you right now. I can't believe it either. <laughs> Don't pitch me. Seriously, I watch your show every day. I just, uh, I, I watch you. I'm addicted to this, man. I'm a, a real estate junkie. I'm actually living up here in uh, southern Ontario, here in Canada. Okay. Uh, so actually, I just keep it short because I know you got a, a lot of other people that want to want to talk to you. Um, what's your... Um, what would you say is the biggest mistake that you have made in your career so far? Because I do like to learn from other people's mistakes. But, uh, you know, what what's one thing that you um, I really changed the way that you work things uh, real estate-wise? Oh, real estate-wise, because I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was going to say me. No, I was going to say, <laughs> make sure they're taking the pill when they tell you they are. Yeah. In fact, feed them the pill. He's no, I'm just kidding. Years but um, seriously, I mean, you know. The mistakes that I've made, luckily I haven't made too many, but I, I do, one thing always sticks out in my mind. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Because we went to yeah, Texas sure. and we bought apartments for $17,000 a unit. And I thought I hit the jackpot. And I really, yeah. it, it busted our it ass. It pocket. kicked our ass. <laughs> it was so so would, mean, you, would you say that that was, uh, at the end of the day, then just lack of due diligence on your part? Yes, or what, yes, what would you yes. Guess? I didn't know the market in Texas. I didn't know they had school tax that was the same as the real estate tax. I didn't know that the... The demand wasn't there for the housing that, 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 you know, because of the immigration problems we have, that one day uh, we can have a building full of uh, great Mexican people working and the next day half of them are gone. I mean, I didn't do my homework. I really didn't on the area. And um, it, it really, it, it could have hurt us. Luckily, we, we, you know, my son went down there and straightened everything out and, and we came out with our pants still on. But um, you got to do your homework. You know, you got to do your homework. You got to know what you're getting into when you buy a piece of real estate. You got to check yes. the physical structure of it. You got to test the economical structure of it. You got to know what the market is. You got to know what the values are around it. 
You know, that's why we're going to put out that due diligence list you made, Ben. I promise people. I'm going to put out my due diligence list? Why that not? took me years of so compiling. What? So you're helping other people. Deals. All right, let's you do know, it. Let's you, put it out. No know, problem. Just, Absolutely. I'm just playing. It's a just, list. I hate just, to say it, guys. It's a list that I got off the internet, and I just compiled it from a bunch of other lists. And there's tons and of lists. And a lot of experience. And a lot of other and management that, companies. I actually, would you guys allow me to slide in one more question? Sure. Um, I was actually, uh, and forgive me for uh, not being able to talk right now. This is, I feel like a 13-year-old that Justin Bieber just called. And I'm sitting here just, you know, <laughs> like I, I just, I'm sorry to go all fanboy on you right, guys. We appreciate I, I really it. Admire. We really do appreciate everybody that, pay, that watches us. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for getting rid of the And rat. let me tell that you, was, that in, 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 in Ontario, I went to, that's where I went to, Ontario. Man, I couldn't believe how many people watched us and, and really treated me like so great in Ontario. People well, are so I'm very nice happy to, to hear about that. Great people, great people. So yeah, what else you got? I migrated from Costa Rica, so I, I've just moved here. It's obviously first uh, first generation immigrant in Canada. And, you know, this year, I've been here for five years. I think this year we're going to have 2020 goal is to hit, uh, you know, humbly a quarter million uh, a month on our end. Oh, congratulations. Between, That's uh, great. So um, just working real hard, but... Uh, like I what said, do you I, do? You mind me asking? Yeah, I'm currently we're doing a property management. Oh. I started. Uh, I've been, I studied real estate for about two years, watching uh, actually a lot of your stuff, uh, just digging into every book possible, you know, on real estate on every aspect of it. And then uh, I actually got into wholesale because I'd seen uh, one of your videos. You know, you just talk about making the deal happen, right? So. Um, just grabbed whatever resources we could. We got into wholesaling uh, about last year. And then, uh, so I, I do property management as well. And then, uh, of course, naturally wanting to evolve into into commercial, right? And uh, I would think got, sales got I, I would think sales would be great to do in Ontario because the prices are so high. The commissions must be oh, tremendous. No, definitely, definitely. You should have, a, you should have an arm. Here. You should have an arm of your property management business that takes on listings and, you know, if you can't buy them or they're overpriced and you sell them to somebody else, but you get that big fat commission. Yes, sir. I, I don't like to, to share too much of, you know, the top secret stuff around here, but uh, I have an idea of something virtual, but, you know, like a virtual property management, not so much hands-on, but with the, of course, the manpower behind it. But yes, property management is, you know, it's, there's a lot to be done here, right? On, on all the levels, right? Yeah, there's always room for improvement, yeah. but you know it's an expensive place where you live, and taxes are very high. So oh, it's crazy. It's it's crazy. Like you, I, I laughed when you talked about you guys talked about the correction a minute ago. It's like yeah, there. I mean, it's undeniable, right? There has to be a, a correction in, in North America, anyways, right? Yeah, it has to be soon. All right. Well, oh, anything yeah. else? We're gonna call on the yeah. next caller. Yeah, actually, my real quick. The the last question that I have was actually just for Aaron. Actually, uh, I've been watching him on the show. Obviously, I've. Like I said, follow you guys a lot. And uh, has he shown any interest in getting into real estate, or what's what's happening with that? Is he going to get emancipated soon? Yeah, I mean, eventually, I I hope that you know uh, he's going to definitely um, get into it. Go ahead, Aaron. Tell him your spiel. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, of course, I'm, I I want to get into it. I've been around it for like ever, ever. Yeah, thirteen years now. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's in his it's blood. In my, exactly, it's in my blood. Of course. To my blood. Yeah, you know what they say about the apple, right? That's it. Yeah. But do you know what they say if you uh, find a what's worse than finding a, a worm in your apple? What's that, Ben? Finding half a worm. Yeah. Yeah, but I hope that Aaron's gonna blend in like his brothers and uh and Brenda and uh and, and, and join the family business. You know, but right now he's uh you know, kinda getting groomed in a way that all the rest of us came from nothing. So, you know, he's allowed uh now you know, get groomed in a certain way where it might even benefit all of us, you know, on that higher class level. Yeah, I you think know? Aaron's going to be able to take it to the next, next level because, you know, he will he has that opportunity to have the education that, you know, a lot of us didn't yeah, get, yeah. you know, and, right, and he goes right. to the schools. that and He's that, on the golf course. That's you know, what a big deal is. And then, and then the network that he's going to develop right now by being around the, the family and the people that my dad associates with is only going to carry us on, you know, in the future. So, you know, we're going to do everything I can, at least I know I am, to you know, teach him everything I know. Guys, Little Ben grew up in the, in the car with legacy, me with the yeah. paint buckets and, you know, and the, the lawn mowers and that's how me and little Ben ran around. You know, Aaron's around right. uh, big shots now like on the golf course and, like and bankers that. and he's a, meeting and, and guys that are a whole big different time, network. You know, so yeah. hopefully he'll take us to another level, you know. 
So I'm sure he will. It's, it's like I said, it's incredible what you guys are doing there in Florida to a point that I, I, I actually, to be honest, I've, I've been waiting to talk to you guys and just say, I, I, I can't wait to meet you guys right on just once, once I'm on the other side and, you know, at a, at another level. And, All right, uh, well, we appreciate, I, I appreciate it, and uh, we're going to start yep. doing some meet and greets down in our hotel, so anybody who wants to come to sunny Florida, you, uh, we're you're trying to put like together. you specific, man. You know, uh, just meet and greet at my hotel like you got one of them, right? Eh? Well, we're going to pick each one, and we're going to probably do one in Fort Lauderdale. we we'll do one in Orlando, one in Tampa, and, you know, maybe if people come stay in a hotel, we'll put on a, you know, a meet and greet and eat. And uh, eat we'll and hang greet. out. Meet, greet, eat and greet, boy. Yeah. Eat, eat and greet. Eat and I'm greet. coming now. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to yeah, be there. Definitely. It's an eat and greet. You're paying double if you're eating. <laughs> eat and greet. But uh, we're, we're going to do some stuff where we all can get together and, you know, maybe get everybody some help and hang out and have a good time. I'm looking right. forward to well, it. Good luck again, to I you. really appreciate your time. All right. Take care. Thanks a lot. You guys Bye-bye. have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Oh, and uh, not, not the caller, but Luke. Luke. Luke KM. So if you find a half a worm, then you ate the other half. Right. Right. That's the whole point. What's right. worse than exactly. finding a yeah, worm? Exactly. Right. Finding yeah. a worm. He didn't. I don't think he. He didn't get it. No. Oh, I got a phone call, but it's from Crazy Mike, and we don't want to talk to Crazy Mike because Mike is crazy. What do we you use want? Use glasses in here because it's so. We're doing bright. a podcast <laughs> trying to help people. What the hell do you want, Mike? You're bugging us. I'm trying to find out what's for lunch today. Oh, go oh my God. God! Who cares? It's all you worry to about mic. is what to eat for lunch. Next to the mic. For a skinny guy, he's only thinking about eating lunch and dinner. Go, go drink your bottle of wine. Spend your two hundred dollars on lunch. And have a nice day. All right? We're busy trying to help That's people. Good. Goodbye. Go find a guy. <laughs> Brooklyn Mike. Uh, all he cares about he found a guy lunch. for lunch. Yeah, go find a guy to have lunch. If I go to Frabatas one more time. Him and his Italian food. Hello? Hi, it's Ben. How you doing? How can we help you? Hi. Can't believe you called. <laughs> My son and I are such fans of you. And I have a question. And think only park for over 25 years it's mobile home and rv it's 59 spaces the cap rate is like 10 to 12 percent i had an it's on the space coast in titusville and i had an offer two years ago at 1.9 million and i didn't take it with the space center and spacex the capital the the rate has just flown through the roof with rv so i'm taking the old mobile homes out making RV pads, and I'm making unbelievable amount of money right now. I just got an offer for $2.9 million, uh, from a company out in California, and I am just so debating on what to do at this point. And How many with spaces the capital was it? Gain 59, taxes, sorry. I don't know if it's wise. Okay, well, number one, let me ask you a question. Are all these homes, you have 59 spaces, are you just renting them out for lot rent, or are you actually renting out the unit itself? No, I'm renting out only the lots. Okay. Now, just out of curiosity, because I thought about buying p- places like that. So if you, how much is your lot rent on average right now times 59 spaces? $700 Ooh, a month I'm baby. this year. Oh, my God. $700. Does that include I the, know. Does and that I include the water? I've got to wait. Does that include the water, wait. sewer, and garbage? Yes, that includes water, and that includes not. It doesn't include electric, just water and sewer. We're and on garbage. septic and garbage, right? Yes. Okay. What kind of expenses you got? Water, yeah. sewer, and garbage. That's it. And what does that run you? Are oh. you? My expenses are water is about, and I'm just estimating it. It runs about eight to twelve hundred dollars a month, and yeah. electric, uh, not electric, and the taxes are twelve thousand a year. Um, so you really you got a big cash cow there. You got a cow. You got yeah. you got income. She's How much is about what do you, half a million a what year? What do you think? Half a million. What do you think your your NOI is? What do you think your bottom line is on cash? You know how much you make in a year on the place? I, every year. Well, the last three years I went from two twenty nine, and that was my gross. And this year I'm at two hundred three hundred seventy nine thousand. Gross or net? And that's recorded amount. Gross. 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 Okay. So you're right, Ben. She's making about a quarter million a year or something like that. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, they're renting at seven hundred bucks, and she says she's got fifty nine spots. Not all of them. Okay. You're, you're not renting all spaces. Not all, not of, not them. all of them. Okay. Ah, okay. All okay. right. And and how can you raise up the other people? That's you gotta, what you got to work yes. on. That's what you got to yes. work on because if you raise the rent 
on those other spots and you bring the whole building, not the building, I'm sorry, the whole land, sorry. if you bring the lot rent up to $700 per... That's $42,000 a month. That's $42,000 a month. Yeah. A that's month. A half a million dollars a, a year. year. Now you just double the value of that price. Year, exactly. A half a million a year at, at, at $5 million is a 10 cap. So, you know, yeah, that, that place in California that's trying no, to buy it for 2.9... They know that that place could be worth five million if they get all the rents up to the seven hundred mark. So they want to come in and they want to buy that place, you know, right now. Then they see the value add in it. And then the beauty part of it is you ain't gonna do no repairs to right. get that money. All you gotta do is just swap. You know, them. you just gotta raise everybody's rents up when their lease is up. So you know, well, no, you she's do- knocking down these modular oh. homes or whatever that are well, there. But- she's taking those. No, out I'm just- taking I'm taking the crappy old mobile homes out. And just yeah. so you the can't lot. get quality people in there. And I'm making RV pads because right. I've got a list of 15 people wanting to pull their RVs in because I'm near SpaceX. Yeah, space coast. No, it yeah. sounds like a great deal. You got a great Perfect. plan going, and you need to get that place. I mean, it's up to you. You know, if you sold now, yeah, you're gonna walk away with some nice money. What are you going to do with the money? You'll never replace the potential, I think, that you have. If you keep doing what your plan says that you're doing, you know, what your plan is, and you get that place, you should have a goal to have that place up to, um, you know, forty grand a month at least in uh, gross income, which is a half a million dollars a year. Then you're sitting on a gold mine. Right mm-hmm. now you're sitting on a silver mine. But if you get those okay. pads all rented up to 700 a month, then you're sitting on a gold mine. And I think the space so- program is definitely going to keep growing. And uh, you're doing great. So, you know, if you want to sell. sell it. Don't yeah, sell it and uh, buy. It depends what you're going to do with the money. You know, the problem is if you get your hands on that few million bucks right now, what are you going to do with it? I've been to Titusville. The prices there are even too high. You know, so, uh, you know, what are you going to do with the three million bucks? And what's your tax ramifications on it also? You know, are you going to 1031 it? You know, then you got to find yeah, another deal. Uh, right now, it. if you're happy with, the, with running that park, uh, I think you should keep trying to maximize your your income there and make it worth as much as you can. I mean, unless you got somewhere to run with that few million bucks that you know you're going to make money on, because uh, right now you're doing you got a plan, you got something to work with here. Get rid of the crappy old ones, rent them out. But the beauty of it is, once you get rid of the crappy old ones, you don't have to build anything. All yeah. you got to do is give them a clean pad. Yeah. You got it made in the shade, lady. Yeah, you don't have to worry about backups, really, or toilets or tenants Not or anything, that. It's really. It's all on them. It's their unit. Yeah, it's their unit. I mean, and, and you're in a great area. So, I mean, I'd keep working until that place is worth five million bucks. You oh, can, my God. Well, That's right. I well, do make it. sure you yeah. keep my number and offer me. It's a distressed park, so it only can go up. Well, so please keep my number because if you're interested in purchasing it next year after I get all the lots well, of yeah, yeah, yeah. I, want, I want to do some listen, DD listen, on this listen. deal a little bit later. I want you to do your plan and you get all the fat out of that project, not the next – because the next person will buy it as a, as an investment for about a, 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 an 8 to 10 cap, which will put you at about $5 million bucks if you get all those pads rented at 700 Wow. Months. So you need to get all the fat out of it. And let the next person buy it as a long-term investment where there's plenty of buyers out there looking for that, especially mobile home parks because there's no real management ex- needed. All you're doing is renting them the spot. So, you know, I would keep going with your plan. Get rid of all the dumps, re-rent the pads, raise everybody's rent to where it should be, and get that place to work $5 million bucks. Okay. okay, I'm listening. I have been waiting to talk to you for a long time. Oh, uh, you know son. what you're doing. I, that's a fact. You know what you're doing. You and your son keep doing it, and just keep getting make progress in that park every day you can. You know, fix it up any way you can without spending a fortune. You'd be surprised. You got a little office there, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Yeah. Put a little landscaping around the office. You got a pool there or no pool? No. All right. You don't need it. It's too much of a headache. So listen, just keep fixing that park up. Like pools, though. Fixing that place up. If you get seven hundred a month for a lot rent, and all you got to do is pay the water and, and you got septic for sewer, then you're home free. Just keep working it, okay. lady. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you, all sir. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> hey, if you need money, take a loan out on it. And you know, I don't know. You you say the amenities no don't fix up, but I'm telling you, yeah, fix I'm up. a hillbilly like myself. <laughs> Listen, who likes to do that camping stuff? That crap. Uh, they ain't doing camping. There's people that live there. No, these are RV parks that are going uh, to visit she, SpaceX. These are people coming uh, to visit the SpaceX. She said 700 a month. They're renting about a month. So I don't know. But if she gets 700 a month, a month yeah. then she's sitting on she's sitting on gold. 
Golden land. That's like buying land with oil in yeah, it. Yeah, 700. So you're right. I no responsibilities. About that. Yeah, yeah, I know. But it's, if it's an RV park, RV parks don't usually stay they, by the month. But if she, well, but she's saying she's renting for 700 a month. Great. Then the next person that puts this space, they maybe they're renting out of Airbnb. Well, Let them do what yeah. the hell they want. All she wants is that 700 a month with no costs. All, All right. Caller. Very good. New caller. New caller. That's New one. caller. Hi. How are you? It's Ben and uh, Sons, and we're here. How can we help you? Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm 33, living in Los Angeles. Uh, really want to get into real estate. Um, I have 40 to 50K down cash, uh, 790 credit score, approved for 600K single family. The issue I have is I've put 11 offers uh, over the past three months. Each one beat and sold over asking. I'm trying to figure out what I need to change to get my first win and my you're, first. You know, you're, you're in a tough thing. location. Come on, you know, you're in Los Angeles. That's like probably one of the most expensive places to be. I mean, and mm -hmm. you're dealing with forty or fifty k that you got to put down. I mean, you know, I don't know what to say unless you're looking to fix up a house and flip it. You know, but then you 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 need financing, and a lot of people that compete with you don't need financing, so they get the deal because they can move quicker than you. Um. I mean, you might need to go outside your area of comfort as far as location. You know, I mean, what towns are growing near you? Normally, when you're in a big city, there's, you know, you go to the suburbs or the outskirts and, you know, and, and try to do something there, maybe. Yeah, we've been putting offers literally all over Los Angeles from 35-mile ranges. So Los Angeles, uh, Huntington Beach, Torrance, even uh, where they're doing new new uh, stadium in Inglewood. Um, I I feel like it might be the market, but <clears throat> I'm trying to do a little bit of self-reflection to see what I can change in my strategy to, to try and do it. Yeah, I mean, you're in a tough area. You got too much competition. The prices are too high. The taxes are too high. Um, you know, you're going to have to find somewhere where you don't have so much competition. I mean, I'm sorry. Unless you can just find some house that you can know that you can buy and fix it up and sell it for a profit. You know, that that's always out there. There's always going to be an ugly duckling or a beat-up house. What are you laughing at? I can laugh at comments that people write. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't mean, mean to comments. interrupt you. I think you're laughing at me. No, you no, I apologize. Hey, hey, hey. I was laughing sorry at comments. Sorry about that. I'm you know, I never hit this kid when I should have. You hit me but, plenty. Uh, that's the problem. So, you know, <laughs> you need to find, you know, if you want to stay within your area of comfort where you live, you're going to have to try to find, you know, uh, somehow you can buy a fixer-upper, you know, or something like that. You know, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's just you're in a tough market. Okay, I'll look into that. Thanks All right, good luck to you. Take care. So anyway, what are the comments are so I funny? Can't What's say so it. funny I can't about can't the comments? <laughs> Tell me. They would like to. No, I'm what? not saying it. Let me read it. I have to go back. I'm not. I'm what not, is so goddamn they funny? They just want to know if you've broken in your jet. Broken in? What do you mean broken in? I don't need to break it. I got a key to it. Have you joined the club of the people, the Mile High Club? I, that's I, all I, it, yeah. Never mind. What's the Mile High Club? I heard of that, but it's, I have a private uh, jet. When you, Mile High Club is, is what? It, it's when you have uh, relations on a plane a couple miles in the air. Oh, I ain't got time for that. I, that's what I, you, you forced it out of me. My name's not John Travolta, okay? I heard about that. <laughs> that's, you know, I he's over here in Ocala. I heard what he does in those planes. I got on a plane to get where I got to go, get busy, do what I got to do. It ain't no fun and games. The plane is for business. Okay, what do we got? We got another Lally. caller. Hey, it's Ben. How you doing? Hey, Bobby Mala. How are you? How are you? How are you? Man, listen to me. I'm great. How are you? I'm hanging in there. How can we help you today? Uh, first of all, let me say it's an honor to speak with you. I I've been a uh, longtime follower ever since back in the old video days. Uh, I forgot the guy's name. Danny or something, right? I recall, yes. That's We're really not allowed good. to mention yeah. his so name awesome anymore. show. I love it. I just have two questions for you, Ben. You ready for these? Yes, sir. Okay, so I actually met your son one time. I was an underwriter on a loan for a property named Jasmine Holmes. Oh, Jasmine Holmes over in Lakeland. You must have met Ben. Yeah, yeah he said me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He so said me. I, I met you on site that day, and I was like, wait a minute. That guy looks really familiar. And I was like, oh, shit, he's, he's on the show that I watched. It looks like the kid from that started out on Porn Stars to me. You remember that? Somebody was saying that just a minute that ago. That I look like stars, the Porn yeah. Stars kid. Looks like a porn him. Hey, <laughs> Jasmine was a great property. The problem was he sold it too quick. 
We, we had that property That's today. Gonna... It would be worth triple what we paid for it. We sold it for maybe double. Yeah. That's, that, that's the way the market is, you know? And the but guy that sold it to me, move, the you know, guy you that sold it me was long. working for a bank. We bought that from a bank. No, no, no. You're thinking of Wood Lake Gardens. Oh, or wait, something. Jasmine and Naples Jasmine, or Jasmine no. and Lakeland? No, Jasmine and Lakeland. Which Lakeland, Jasmine? Florida, yep. Lakeland. Yeah, I told you. No, you're thinking of, Jasmine was the one next to uh, Griffin Park. They were right across the street next to Home Depot. And it was Depot. sold to us by a bank. Wood I know Lake. the guy. He worked for the bank. Now he's a broker. Yeah, I but know. you're saying the other Not guy. Wood Lake. That was John. That was. That was what's his name? Yeah. You don't know. Anyway, so you underwritten it for us for who the 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 lender, the buyer. So who the guy? Oh, that well, it we you sold guys, it. Yeah. I was the underwriter on the loan that bought it from. Oh, well, from, we closed the deal. So you must have done your job very good. And now he's sitting pretty right now. He's sitting incredibly pretty, and that's part of the reason why I was wondering. Is like everybody sure we sell to what, always makes money. So why do you leave money on the bone? I mean, there was because we so got to keep growing. We got to keep that, growing yeah. at the time. We felt like, you know, we did what we had to do to that property. I, we put a lot of money in that right. property. We went in there, we built playgrounds, we painted the place. We did all kinds of stuff to the interiors, I remember. Uh, we put up new overhangs or mm -hmm. something. Uh, we did all kinds of shit. And we put our money in, and we felt like, all right, we got the place stabilized. And for that market at that time, we figured, well, we can keep it and have a good cash flow, or we could sell it and get a big chunk of money and buy something else. So at the time, we just felt like it was a smart move to buy something else. I mean, that's the way it is. You know, you can't have everything, you know. But we were happy about the deal. I think we, we probably paid like 40 for it. We probably sold it for 60 a door, right? You know, we made our 20 a door. Yeah, a it was 100 number. some units. We made a couple of million bucks. The next guy made money. Everybody lives happily ever after. That's the way it is. We don't have so to have did, everything. Did, we're not greedy. No, I can tell you're not greedy. Is that... So you meet with a broker, fact, and the broker greedy. tells you it's worth ten million dollars. You initially go out at nine million, or what's like your decision making on that? You just want a nice, quick, easy sale. Well, the point was, I mean, we we felt we sold it for what the market price should be. You know, it's a, everything right. is timing in a market. At the time, we probably sold it for sixty something a door. You know, we probably paid forty a door. So, but we probably went in and spent a few a door. After all the smoke clears, we made 20 a door on 140 units, I think it was, uh, something like that. And uh, we made a couple of million bucks, and we're happy. That's what we do for a living. It was you know? a good day. It was a I good day, you know. Okay. And uh, we've done a lot of stuff in that, in that area. We, we we got something still in Lakeland. So, you know, it was great. Sure, we appreciate sure. you underwriting it and making the deal go through. And who did Listen, you work I'm for? The, I'm the, I, who did I'm you work for? So ask who did you work for when I you underwrote it? I used to work for a company called Walker and Dunlop. Did the financing. Oh, okay, oh, great. Walker yeah, Walker yeah. and Dunlop. Okay. Yeah, Very good. A, well, was, uh, you got a hot I deal for back then, but it was either a Fannie or a Freddie loan. And where are you at now? Where do you live now? Now I live in the D.C. area, and oh. I own property down in the Richmond, Virginia oh. area. I'm still doing underwriting as my day job. You know Richmond? I mean, I've, I've been there briefly, but it's very expensive in the D.C. area too expensive in the D.C. area. That's why yeah. I'm in Richmond. In fact, I'm looking at a 100-unit a property. You mean Richmond, Virginia, Richmond right? Today. Richmond, Virginia? Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. It's the capital of Virginia. That's yeah, right. right. Very That's good. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I got out of New York as soon as I could. Me too. Did uh, undergrad and grad school in real estate and then got out of New York, you know, as soon as I could and, and went to an affordable area. So I was an I was undergrad. just starting out about a couple of years ago. I never grad. But that's great. I'm glad. I'm happy for you, and uh, we appreciate everything, and good luck to you. Listen, All right. second question for you. How do I get more involved with the show? With the show? Contact Rafal. Yeah, so Email I, Rafal. Rafal. I've got a finance background, and I think I can maybe help some of your listeners as well. Okay. What do you think? Contact our producer. He runs the whole show. His name's Rafal. He's got your number, and he said he's going to call you. Perfect. All right. we'll follow. I'll talk to you later. Thanks so much, All guys. Right. Keep Have doing a great what you're weekend. Doing. I love it. Thank you. Bye bye. You too, buddy. Take care. Thanks. Bye. More diet Pepsi. More diet Pepsi. Come on. You actually want more? You're the Pepsi boy. He used to be the texture boy. Texture boy. He's going to texture all the walls. With the hopper. Beat up with the hopper. Yeah, with the texture. Texture boy. I used to call him the guy as soon as they got finished hanging the sheetrock. All right, texture boy. He come running in. The That's tape and mud texture. wasn't even dry. I'm texturing, He's texturing it. it. Yeah. You know? Hello, how are you? You're not there. Answer your goddamn phone. Hello, hi, it's Ben. How are you? 
Hey, it's Ben. How Hello. can we help you? How are you? Good, good. So I have a, a challenge where I, I'm flipping about six properties a month in San Diego. Ooh. And I make good money with that. It's it's a good gig, but uh, I find that it's hard for me to scale up. So I'm trying to buy more single-family rental properties in San Diego. And the reason I'm choosing single families is because the financing that I can get for flips it allows me to come into the deals with a little money down, um, and I can't take that same financing to other states. So I, what my question is, is should I go and buy uh, a good amount of rental properties, even if they're breaking even right now at 7% interest rate, um, to where you know down the line maybe I could refinance them and bring the interest rate down lower? Or take understand. advantage of appreciation. You're buying rental houses right now? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. So my goal for this year is about one to two rentals a month. Well, what right are you doing? Now, what are you doing right now million. to make money? What are you doing? You say you're flipping houses, are you buying them, fixing them, selling them? What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. All right. And so, you're making money at it, right? Yeah. So why I do you want like to jump into something you ain't gotta make money at? I don't know. Because Listen, I feel like I'm on a hamster wheel a little bit. Um, how are you on a hamster wheel if you're making money? You, you, if you're making money, then you're building up in, You're building up cash. You're building money up. If you're flipping, how, how, many, how much do you make on each flip on average? About 30000 30000 so, And you're doing, but you're not six, closing six a month, are you? Yeah, I am doing more than six. Oh, six come on. You're talking about you're making 30000 at a time six. That's one hundred eighty grand a month. It's over a couple of million a year. Are yeah, you doing money. a couple That's of million money. a year? Yeah, so... Listen, um, if you're making yeah. a couple of million a year flipping houses, you need to flip more houses and train people to help That's you. A, right. Well, I have teams. It's just hard for me to get um, more volume. It's just... it's. I know, because you're I in hear, a tough yeah. market. You're in San Diego. Yeah. San Diego is yeah. very expensive. But, so I mean... Do you, think, do you think it's a mistake to buy a couple houses a month that are just rentals, just kind of on the side, um, because I'm taking advantage of some good financing that I have, which is very little it's, down. It's all about how yeah, much money like you're making. Flow. It's about cash flow. It's about equity. You know, either mm -hmm. you're going to make the money on the flip or you're going to make the money every month in your pocket. But you want to make sure that you have money to pay that mortgage just in case. You're paying 7%, you said, because you're putting low money down? Yeah, mm. so it's it's a hundred percent of purchase and a hundred percent of renovation money that I get mm. on finance. But that's good for a flip. You don't you know, there right. is no for a rental that's not good because you don't want to pay seven percent on that money. You don't wanna mm -hmm. you know, or you can buy the house with those financing terms at first and then once you stabilize it with a tenant and fix it up, then you go out and refinance it with a real lender. You know, with a with a with a regular lender where they're gonna give you ninety percent. You know, uh, right. you know, and then you put cash in your pocket. You can do that, you know, but... Do you think um, I could find 90% on single families? What, loans? Long term. I can, I, I've only been able to find 80%, which is fine. You I probably got to go to a smaller bank, or it depends on the relationship you have. But that's why right now you're dealing with what, a hard money lender at 7%? Picks yeah. Up? All right. Yeah. So the problem is I dealt with hard money lenders at first, too. And they're great. Don't get me wrong. They're great because they don't require a lot of your money. But, you know, the point is you need to graduate and start having relationships with banks. You know, you got to start sticking some money in a bank. And, and, and you know, but and if you can only get 80 on a refi, it might still pay your money, pay you back if you bought the house right and you didn't spend a fortune fixing it up and you got to rent it out. You might be able to still right. cash out your money at 80%. So, right. But let me tell you something. Uh, you know, that that's the ticket, you know, keep buying them with no money invested. Pay the guy to 7%. There's no period of time you have to keep paying him, right? You can pay him off any time? Correct, yeah. All right, then keep using his like money. Month, keep using his year. money. Stabilize the property. Flip the property or rent it out at a lower interest rate. Rent it out and then refinance at a lower interest rate. Okay. If you can't sell it for what you want. But, you know, it sounds like you know what the hell you're doing. You're just not going to find a lot of product anymore in San Diego. You might have yeah. to start going out to a... Do you think San Diego could appreciate over time? I think so. I don't know. You know, California to me is at a height right now. Things The numbers are so high, they don't make sense to me. So I can only see things going down, not up. But, you know, who knows? Okay. All right, good All luck right, well, to thanks. you. Take care.
Thank you. Thank you. you, you Did you just, just go through a you whole, just pack, a whole of pack of cigarettes? Number one, we've been sitting here for two hours. You, you two wait, wait, hours. Wait, 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 all I had was one, You went through two, a three, whole four. pack of I did cigarettes. Not. I started that goddamn pack yesterday morning. Okay, four cigarettes in two hours? Come on, that's pretty damn good sitting here with you guys. I've only had Normally, like if I have to sit in the same room with you two guys, I'll smoke a whole pack in two hours. These people are helping me quit smoking. What do you got, another caller? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Aaron made his ashtray. He used to have more ears on. Had yeah, four. it was about four was years a turtle. ago. Yeah, now it's a it's broken a turtle. turtle. Oh, how you doing? Oh, now it's an apple. Hey, well, it's Ben, how are you? How can we help you? Hey, listen, Ben, thank you for taking my call. I own a fourplex in Los Angeles. I got it for 305 Now it's worth about 800000 Ding, 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 ding. You hit the jackpot. Sell it. Man, people oh, are making a fortune in real I estate. I know. You know. It's the market right now. This guy made a half a million dollars in probably East L.A., right? It is in East L.A. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, well, listen, that's great. I haven't put anything into it. Um, I got a, a tax break back in the day. It was ten thousand, so I bought it for three hundred five. Nothing down. So uh, my question is: Should I sell it? I have about one hundred and fifty thousand in the bank right now. Uh, everything's really expensive, so I'm looking for that new construction. I don't know if that makes sense to you. You know, it depends who's building it. You know, the problem is, you know. Uh, you're sitting on a nice amount of cash, but the question is what to do with it. I mean, have you looked into new construction? Have you looked into the price of building something and how much the land's going to cost and all the soft costs and the construction costs? you got to have a budget. Right, and uh, it's about $150 a square foot on the cheap side. What do you want to build? A uh, house? you want to build duplex? you going to build fourplex? What are you going to build? Right. I want to go as big as possible for that particular plot of land that I'm – that that I'm looking at. What's it zoned for? But, but at five units because of all the restrictions that they have. All right, so you can build five units, right? Right. All right, so if you build five units and it's going to cost you 150 bucks a square foot to build, that's seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, correct? Right. But how much is the land costing you? Well, the land's they're expensive and they want cash for them. How much? Uh, well, I looked at some. They're going for ninety-seven thousand undeveloped. Piece. Aren't you looking for a piece that's uh, got five units to build on, or what? Right. How and much is that piece? Also. How much is that piece that you can build five units on? Ninety-seven thousand undeveloped. All right, but what's the total cost? Is seven fifty going to build those five units or more? You need more. There's well, I'm looking. It's probably going to be more. Give me more because you got to put a road in. You got to put pipes in. You got to put. I don't know. It sounds like you're going to be into that thing for five million bucks, right? I mean, for one million bucks, five units, right? Right, right. All right. So here you are. If you build that piece of property for, with five units on it for a million bucks, you're in for two hundred thousand a unit. After mm -hmm. you rent it out, what kind of rent are you going to collect on that five unit building? How much is each unit going to rent for? Well, there in East LA, in that area, particular, it's going about what fourteen hundred a month. All right. So you got about six thousand a month in gross income. Not enough. No, more mm -hmm. than that, more than that. 14 times 5. Yeah, it's not enough. How much is 14 times 5? Well, 1 times 4 is 5, and 4 yeah. times 5 is 20, so seven. it's uh, 7. Yeah, About seven. 7 grand a month, right? Yes. So how much is a property brand new worth that's bringing in 7 grand a month in that area? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I haven't looked at that yet. You got to do your homework. You don't want to build something. If it's bringing in 7 grand a month, it's 80 grand a year. Uh, it's probably worth about what he paid to build it. So it sounds like uh, That's a what break I said. Even. It doesn't, you know. But then, but you can finance the whole thing when you're done, right? Uh huh. Now, if you got seven grand a month coming in, and you finance that whole million bucks at only about uh three grand a month, plus your taxes, your insurance, you're into it for five grand a month, then you're gonna make uh, two. two grand a month. So you're gonna make two grand a month, but you'll have a nice brand new fiveplex, you know. And then if your rent's only fourteen, it might be able to go up a little more. How many bedroom units? Fourteen. One bedrooms in L.A. I right, one bedroom. Be more oh, you can't that. build more than one bedroom units oh, there. That's what I, yeah. You know what you yeah, need to do? Would. This is what you need to look into doing. You need uh -huh. to build. People don't care. Renters are happy with more bedrooms and less square footage. If you can squeeze two bedrooms out of them, that's gonna put your cash flow way up. 
Even if you have to make the bedroom smaller, you need to see what's the most to let you build number of bedrooms. You already know you can build five units. Now you need to see what's the minimum square footage you need uh, for bedrooms so you can build as many bedroom units as possible. You know, when we were in Oakland, California, you know, we were building uh, two bedroom units at a 700, 750 square feet. And people were happy with it because they needed the two bedrooms. Right, right. So you need to look in to see if you can maximize the number of bedrooms in those units. You know, you okay. want to you want to build as big as you know as big as you can as far as square footage, and you want to get as many bedrooms out of them as you can. Are you renting Section okay. Eight? Who are you going to rent to? Section Eight or open market? Open market. Well, you know, if open market, I bet you two bedrooms rent for what? Probably you have a three hundred a month, probably right. Instead of fourteen, they probably rent for seventeen, right? Right. Well, and it goes and that extra uh, three hundred times five is another fifteen hundred a month, and you can squeeze two bedrooms out of them. How many square foot do you know already? How many square foot you plan on building? Well, I'm least uh, I'm looking at at least five hundred. Oh, five hundred small. That can only be a one bedroom. You can't you can't build any bigger square footage there. Not on that lot, no. Well, you know. I don't know. You'll still make, you know, you'll make a couple of grand a month positive cash flow, you know, with no money down invested at the end of the game because you can refinance and pull your whole million out of it. So. Right. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It's well, hard. Then, it's very hard I, in Los Angeles, you know. It's hard. I'm it's sorry. very expensive right very now. Very expensive, you know. All right. Well, good luck to you. And, and I'm happy that you made all that money on that house. Put that money away somewhere safe. If, oh, you're not selling right now, are you? You're gonna, why sell it? Does that thing cash flow? It's cash flow. It's positive about, what, 1600 a month? Well, you know, you're probably better off refinancing it, pull out some money to build, get a construction loan, and keep that cash flow coming in on that house. Right. Don't right. sell it. I well, mean, you know, I wouldn't sell it if you don't, you know, unless you can take that money, you know. You're better off buying against it in this market and keeping the cash flow. Yeah, just do your due diligence on who you pick as a contractor. And, uh, you know, your civil engineers and just make sure you go with people who have been, yeah, doing, been deals doing deals it. and uh, maybe look at projects they've been doing. Cause exactly. It, it, it takes it, it does take the right person to get something done quick. Um, and, and, and construction costs go up and up as the longer you go on. So you have holding costs and you got, you know, all these things that you don't expect. You know, check your impact fees. Make what about sure you, modular, you see modular construction out of the question? I mean, modular was really big in California. You can't even tell it's modular once it's done. Well, I haven't looked at modular, but I, I, I've seen them. it on the internet, like on YouTube, and that sounds Go visit a factory. It, it really quick. Go find the closest factory and do a factory tour like I did. You'll be surprised okay. how well they're built. I've had them that lasted 40 years, and I sold them still. You know, you and if they're just rentals, trust me, manufactured housing, modular housing, go find the closest factory to you and go pay them a visit. Sit down with them and say, here, here's the piece of land I got. I want you to give me five units on it, and they'll figure it all out, and, and, and it might save you a ton of money. You might be able to get it for 100 bucks a square foot or less. Oh, wow. Well, so thank you, you for that. You need to go look at that. Go yeah, visit the, the factory. Don't use a middleman. Go do a tour. They do tours and all that shit and work directly with the factory. Okay, perfect. Thank all right, good luck much, to you. Guys. Take care. Thank you, everybody. All right, bye-bye. Yeah, don't hire the turtle builders. Like you hire. That's right. <laughs> okay, Rafal, you got somebody else? Hello, how are you? They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. What else is going on? I gotta get ready for tomorrow. We got work to do yes, today. Yes, we do. Hello? Hello? Hey, it's Ben. How are you? How can we help you? Oh, Mr. Mallow, how are you, my man? I'm doing well, thank you. Very good. Um, qu uh, Question for you. I'm up here in Washington, D.C., a huge fan of yours. From the John Pass episode, when you guys purchased the property at auction, I saw Ben Jr. had his um, spreadsheet up for doing his analysis. Uh, two questions. One is, how do I get a copy of that spreadsheet, and where do you buy your sunglasses? <laughs> That's the second time somebody's asked about the sunglasses. Oh, gee, sunglasses. And These are actually Louis Vuittons, and they're not, they're not knockoffs. They're the real deal. I got them on sale in Italy because you didn't have to pay tax there when you're American. Greece. But, um, Greece. Greece. Oh, Greece. Greece. Greece, Greece yeah. remember. Um, so go to Greece. The problem is you're going to spend $10,000 going to Greece to save 
The taxes don't make sense. But they're Louis Vuittons, and Ben does analysis because he's anal. But, um, you know, I mean, basically, <laughs> on, gotta any, be anal in this on any deal that we do, any deal we do, you got to do your homework and make sure day one, forget about what the future holds, forget about all that shit. That's a factor, but it's not an important factor the day you're buying. You got to sit down and look at every single penny coming in and every single penny going out and make sure you're comfortable with that the day you buy it, especially at an auction, because once you do an auction, there's no turning back. What, I got something on my face? No, talking to the mic. You talking keep... to the mic, talking to the mic. You're not talking. So, you know, his analysis is basically, you know, he'll tell you, you know, it's money in and money out. Yeah, I mean, the, the Excel spreadsheet that I make, I, I remake that every time. It's not like a, a, a something you get off the Internet. It's just a plus and minus equals. I mean, every property has different basically income you and take different all expenses. The, yeah, you take all the income, you put that at the top. You add that all up to a total. Some equals sums, column B, 7 through B, whatever. You know, uh, right. and you go down and you add that up. And then at the bottom, you just minus it out. You know, you, you, that's it. It's, what's it's that not worksheet a, called? Uh, use a, what's that program? Well, for what? It's a regular accounting program that we use, uh, the spreadsheets we use. What is it? Well, QuickBooks. we use QuickBooks not, and no, we use QuickBooks. Rent Manager. No, what's the spreadsheet? Excel. 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 Yeah, Excel. I mean, Excel not, will help you Excel. It's not a hard uh, Excel spreadsheet to put together. Just knowing the formulas and putting them in. Um, and then there's there's ones that you can buy online. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I don't care. I'll put it online, too. It doesn't matter to me. And I'll do the same work on a paper napkin and come out with the same numbers. Yeah, but I can change my numbers quickly. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, basically that. the point is you got to understand the property you're buying. you got to know every single expense you're going to have. You know, because I'm going to tell you, a lot of people hide stuff, you know. Oh, I didn't tell you about this. Oh, you got to do your homework. All right? All right. Very well, good. Great. Well, hey, and I'm going to tell you something money. else. You know, the best pair of glasses I ever had are really the most comfortable and durable and great glasses are actually Foster Grants. And I had a pair, and I asked this guy, hey, I broke the ear on it. Can you look them up and see if you can get them fixed? I thought they were expensive. He told me that damn glasses of Foster Grants would only cost like 30 bucks. And, and they're the best glasses I ever had. So don't I wouldn't spend the money on Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Screwy Louis. Uh, all right, good luck to you. We're great. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. And the only reason why I bought him that day is because I said, you know what? My wife's going to go in that store and spend some goddamn money. I'm going to spend some too. I'm sick of her <laughs> buying all that expensive <laughs> shit and I ain't getting nothing. I'm going to see how it feels to buy some expensive shit, you know? They're nice. They're cool, but uh, they're cool. give me the $30 yeah, Boston Grants. I like them. You know, if I break them, I throw them away. It didn't cost me shit. I don't know. These things cost several hundred dollars, I think. Yeah. Not even real gold. They're cool, though. What happened? Is somebody there? Hello? Nope. No, they gave us a Google Voice number. Google, Google, Google. Google runs the world. Mm-hmm. Google just... Funny, yeah. the, the, Google's the, the, the most of the best internet. Best investments had the weirdest names. I know. Google. You want to invest in Google? I tried to invest in Google. A guy talked me out of it. I remember that day. I want to kill that guy. Said, Man. It was an IPO at 80 bucks. And I said, take all my money and put it in Google. No, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Stupid schmuck. Now I'm sitting here stuck in real estate with you when I could have been tired in Google. And I should have invested in Amazon. Well, you look like an Amazon. Hello, how are you? Hey, how are you doing, Ben? Pretty good. How are you? How can we help you? Good. A um, couple of questions. Uh, one quick one. <clears throat> Got a property. It's a triple net lease. It's by a triple B rated national company. Uh, it's it went vacant last year, but there's the lease is still up through 2030. Got an I, I can get into that thing. It's about a 9.75 cap. They've got it priced at, so it'll be over 20% cash on cash return. And um, uh, just wondering if that's something you would do, given there may be no prospects to you know repurpose it in 2030 because the competition that's that you would do it with with their peers. They're already there. So they, it's not like you would be able to bring somebody else in to do it. It'd have to be a total repurpose. But over the next 10 years, I mean, if I go get financing, I don't know if you got to put 20 or 25% down. I'm figuring 25% down on something like that. I mean, I'll double my cash flow in, in Is five the space years dark? At, at least or get my money back. Is the space dark? Dark, yeah. They're going to pay you rent for the next 10 years yep. on a dark space. Yeah. You're 100% Crazy. sure. 
one hundred percent. They have no sure. out clauses. Where did we get screwed recently, Ben? We had to have some kind of sales thing. And it's um, they didn't meet the sales and get sale. out of lease. Yeah, you are one hundred percent sure they're going to pay if, you. If I don't try to go and and do anything with that property, I mean try to bring another tenant in and try to get some extra rent on the side or you know under the table type thing, it's I can just sit there dark and collect checks for the next ten years. And it's what a company was it's it? a I triple B rated, you know. Sounds it's like a, a Walgreens to me. Something like that. Yeah. It's uh, CBS, it, it's something right, like that. It's not Walgreens, but um, I just looked at it like it. I'm not that it's too good to be true. Obviously, and you can get it almost a ten cap. I can get it at a nine. It's at a nine. It's priced at a nine point seven five cap, <sighs> given the uh, price they have right now based on the current rents, and they've actually got three escalation clauses in it for the next nine years what's the chance years. of this company filing bankruptcy and you getting screwed i would say doubtful given the nature of the business and the amount of stores they have out there it'd be almost one of those things where you would think the government would come bail them out because of the job loss hmm. you know to me it's just there's a, risk it's in a, everything that's a gamble it's, I mean, that's there's risk in everything out but there that are paying you can get a 10 cap you know the problem is no bank's going to be happy about financing a dark space so, mm -hmm. you know, gotcha. you can't really take that 10 cap and turn it into a 15 cash on cash, you know. Right. So being dark as it's good to bed, I don't know. Um, it's risky, but, you know, if you're really sure you're going to get that money in 10 years, I mean, uh, you're talking about putting down how much money you got. Well, that's the thing. How are you going to finance it? Uh, I don't think the bank's going to be happy about being dark when they yeah, go out and appraise well, it. Well, that's the only, that's, uh, this would be my first triple net. So yeah, but I how are you going to finance it? You'd be able to pay cash for it? No, I mean, I. I, I would I could put the twenty five percent down. Yeah, but I don't understand. The point is this: I, I'm not sure. You have to talk to your banker, and you guys say, "Listen, would you guys finance a dark store if it was guaranteed backed by payments. if it was guaranteed by this triple B company?" Right. You got to go do your homework first in the bank because I would think a bank is not going to want to insure uh, loan you money on a dark store. I'm sorry, I don't know, but to my experience, right, that's why they don't like dark stores. That, that, that's why. That's why I was calling you. Have, if you've ran across that, I mean, it's yeah, a, I the, ran across the, the company dark, guarantee yeah. is strong, but yeah. again, it is dark. Yeah, I think you're gonna have trouble financing it. You need to go talk to your bank first before you do anything, and then you have okay. to say, well, if the bank's willing to put up eighty percent, then hell yeah, I'll do it because you're only okay, risking you would the twenty percent. If the bank says yes, yeah, because you only have you know twenty percent to skin, and then for I ten agree. years you got ten percent return. And then you depreciate. Wait, now is it, this includes the building too, not not just the land, right? Everything. Well, then no, you get to it's, depreciate it's, the it's age of the there. building, so you know it's pretty much going to be tax free or tax deferred. Uh, you better go talk to a bank and make sure you get a well, loan I can do, first. I can do the financing out of my four hundred one k, so uh, that, that's able to get acquisition financing. So what happens? The whole I thing goes south on you. On the yeah, but I don't know. You're not even going to start messing with your retirement. You'd rather play with the bank's money. If the bank ain't willing to risk it, why should you be willing to risk it? No, no, no. no. What I'm saying is, is I would, I would put the down payment oh, down, down out of my 401k. Well, that's fine. So that way, yeah, the, the yeah, return yeah, yeah. would come back tax free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, the, you're pulling the money out tax deferred, but tax the older. But I mean, well, yeah. it's a Roth. It's a Roth, so it's, yeah. it's definitely tax free uh, forever. The point is, you got to find out if you go get that other eighty percent. That's the key to your whole project. Will a bank give you the eighty percent on a dark store? Got it. You know, tell you know, tell them who the tax, you know, who the creditor is, and I mean the, the tenant is, and see if they'll bite. If they'll bite, then you get ten percent for the next ten years, and then and then, then you get your money back. So you know, they, you know, yeah, that and then after you do that, if the bank does bite, you don't want to just sit there and let it be vacant. You have ten years, then well, I'll no, try to lease no. that well, place. Well, but if he starts, Maybe you can lease it at a. But if he starts trying to lease it, then the company's going to say. Uh, uh, I've never. Right. I mean, I've never heard that, but you know, it's all depending on the Sounds lease. Sounds like he read the contract. Yeah, so. but I mean, yeah. I would think I, I would think that you should be able to find another tenant in the next ten years, or at least line up a tenant. Why? Oh, no, no, I agree. Tenant. I was going to look at He ain't going to get the same I mean, return. He might get more of a return. He's not going to get more than a ten cap from anybody. What do you mean? You don't know what right. the type of rent Stop. he could get. You don't know. He's not going to get no ten cap. He's getting a ten cap. It ain't going to happen. He'll end up getting a six or a seven from a regular tenant.
I mean, I don't know well, the numbers. Exactly, I'm so. thinking the repurpose would be from a regular tenant that I have to find locally there. There's going to be less rent, too, probably. May or may not be able to give me that, right? Yeah, and you have T&I, you have to, you can have fix-up money, you can have what they call, what's T&I right. again? Uh, tenant improvements. Tenant improvements, you can have loss of rent. Listen, if you can guarantee, you better go see if the banks won't loan you money. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. Okay, okay? and then I got a, go one other quick question, just as a, from you starting out, I, I'm a pretty experienced real estate investor and been doing it for a lot of years, but I pay, I save my money and then pay cash for my property. I never, I've got zero opposite. debt and no, I just, and I can't opposite. get over. How did you get over because the, I the borrow, to go and borrow listen, money? If you don't borrow money, you can't grow. I started with nothing. Right. I started I with, I started with, a, with a, my first deal was $26,000 crack duplex. You know, I mean, and I borrowed every penny I could for that place. You got to work with the bank's money. If I if I keep if I don't owe I owe hundreds of millions of dollars. There's no way right. I could have came up with that kind of money. But I'm making money on the bank's money. You can't. But I'm assuming it, a lot of that is non recourse, right? Hell All yeah, it's not recourse. recourse. It's full recourse. All full All recourse. recourse. You know why? Wow. Because I'm in the driver's seat. I'm not going to go right. belly up. I'm in the game to win it, baby. You know, and you can go non recourse if you want. That, that's fine too. But I don't like non-recourse because that's more permanent type financing. You know, I'm not, I'm in it sometimes in the short haul. Listen, gotcha. you need to you need to borrow everything you can from the bank because the more you borrow, the more they want to loan you. The more you can make, and the more you can make, and the more you can you're grow. using less money of your to own. Buy. I'd well, rather you, take a million dollars right. and split it up into five deals than put it into one deal because I can make five times the money. It's simple. And I, I I agree. I mean, if I would have done that over the last ten years, it would have well, been ridiculous. Not too late. Smart not too late. To yeah, do, you'd but. be you'd be sitting with a ton of properties or a ton of deals you did. All right. Well, you need right. a, you need to start you know using the bank's money. Go get friendly with a banker. That's what you need to do. All right. All right. Thank Good you. Good luck. Ben. Take care of yourself. Good luck. Thanks. What else you got? What else you got? My mic went off. Mic went off. Your mic's not off. Yeah, My mic, mic is off. I can't hear it. Your mic is on. I can't hear my here, well, my earphones are off. Oh shit! Did I unplug you? Hello, you unplugged me. You know you're a dirty little rat. Dirty? I'm not a rat. Not a rat, but you're it's a fat. Year rat. You're the Chinese right? New Year yeah, rat. I'm the New Year. You're the, I'm new, the new Chinese. Rat. That rat is fucking everything up. You can't the Chinese? Hear? I can't hear shit. For real? But really? the Chinese Absolutely. have that big uh, virus going on. That Mexican. Oh, the coronavirus. Beer virus. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't drink Corona. Oh no, but Corona might be the cure. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I put lime and salt. But I can't hear cure. nothing, so lime what do we salt. got going on here? I don't here? know. What did you do to your mic? I can't hear nothing. I didn't Seriously? Check down I mean, here. You're, you're, check this wire. Oh, I can't hear now. I can't hear now. What? Your connections are all screwed Hello? up. Hello? Hello, I can this hear. This Polish system ain't working. Uh, oh, huh? I can hear. I can hear. I can't I can hear, hear nothing. We got loose wires. Stop kicking hear. all the wires. I'm not it's kicking probably nothing. You. I like to kick you. It's probably you kicking the wires. I don't see nothing wrong. Well, I got nothing. He's writing on the cords here. That's why, probably. Oh, my God. What? Anyway, we're following. I got no hearing, so. Here, take mine. I'm deaf. No. Let him fix mine. It's not going to reach. That's not going to reach. You gonna? You take those. I'll take yours. Man. All right. But then Rapal can't hear. All Did right. you need to hear, Rapal? Okay. I can hear. I can hear. All right. Can you hear? Yeah, you hear? Uh, yeah I can hear. I got to get this. All right, you got another caller? I bet you turned the volume down you on probably these. probably did. <coughs> I didn't do nothing. Oh, wait. God damn you. These aren't the good ones. They don't have the, the volume. The Chinese on. earphones you got. That's all right. We're on a low budget. Yeah. Remember, we don't do this for the we money. We're on a low budget at Hard Rock. <laughs> I bet you went to the council oaks and ate a big fat steak. Oh, didn't by you? the time I got you there, it was closed. Yeah, good. <laughs> Tried to have dessert. Oh, man. That council oaks, that's the best that's... steak in the world. Yeah. And that oh, apple, yeah. Frank, you got to eat. Anybody like steak? I learned something. All that Wagyu and all that shit from Japan, it costs you a fortune. You want to ask for a restaurant that has the ribeye cap. It's called the cap. It's the and end it's, cap. No, it's not the end cap. That's different. This is like off the back. It's only so much on Sweet a cap. Sweet breads. No? That's the fat in the neck that Argentinian crap. Oh. They'll put you in a hospital. It's called the ribeye <laughs> cap. You want a ribeye cap and melt in your mouth. All right, I can't hear nobody. Hello? Crank him up. Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Wait, I think it's our problem. We got Polish sound system here. Hold on. Turn it up. Hello? How are you? It's Ben. How can we help you? Hey, man, I watch the show all the time, man. I just wanted to call in. I just bought a property here in St. Louis, Missouri. It's a rehab property. It's a Section 8. I'm trying to do Section 8 with it. I wanted to call and ask, can you use almost any property 
as Section 8 income property. Basically, like, it, it's kind of in an abandoned area, but it's there's a neighbor that lives there. They occupy it. There's, like, two other people on the whole block, but there's a lot of abandoned houses, and I'm just hoping it's not like a, a, a dud type of property. You got to be careful because uh, Section 8 people got they're, they're picky, too. You know, you got to make sure... I understand what he's saying. He bought a property in a rural place. Is it pretty place. much like guaranteed? Like Listen. I'm going to get guaranteed rent. It's it's two. It's a two family. One upstairs, one downstairs. Three bedroom upstairs. Two bedroom downstairs. Okay. Number and one. Number one. Okay. You know you got to pass section eight inspection, right? You know that. Right. Okay. Right. right. So fine. You got the place in the right condition, but you got to find a tenant that's willing to give their voucher up to get section right. eight to pay you. So you gotta advertise on Go Section Eight is a is a website that you listed on. You gotta you know you gotta find a tenant with that Section Eight voucher. You know as long as you can find a tenant with a Section Eight voucher that that that's happy living there, and as long as that place passes inspection, then you're home free. But you better make sure you don't. Now the problem I had was I bought places that were so rough. Sometimes I had to get a rough Section Eight tenant because uh, a good, a good one was too soft. Like some. I didn't know, but when I started going there at night, I started to see people, you know, they, they make their, you know, hookups right there in front of the building. Like, I had no idea. It, it, it's like, there's nothing going on in the morning time, but at night. They like sleep four, all five, day. Four, 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 the creeps come out at night. The creeps come yeah, out at do. night. Let oh, me tell you something. Do. You're doing the same shit I used to do, and, you know, the point is this. You know, you got to have people that are willing to live there that ain't smoking, that ain't getting high, that ain't involved in that shit, willing to live there, and that are tough right. enough to live there, and you better make sure that nobody's messing with your property at night, you know, and, um, you know, you got you to gotta be careful. You got to make sure that, you know, you, you know, you can find a good tenant that's going to live there. You, ain't, you don't want to rent to nobody that's going to cause you more headaches than, you know, than you got. I, so, you I better, got, no, I got you 100 You already bought the place? Like you already bought it? I already bought it uh, under my company name. I plan on doing a 1031 exchange. If I ever do sell it, I bought it in my company name, Asphalt Enterprises, down here in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm planning on trying to do Section 8. I, I watch videos all the time. I use you as the motivation, you know, because you, you say you started off in the Section 8. You know, I, I was watching the Life of Sales stuff. So. Listen, you already so bought I, it, I, so you're stuck. So now what you got to do is yeah. you got to get out there and you got to market it and, and put it online and go Section 8. You got to put an ad on Craigslist. You got to go put a flyer, go down to the housing authority, see if they'll let you list it there. And you need to find, it's empty right now, right? Right. Are they yeah, breaking I mean, in I mean, to play stealing? Are they breaking right in at night? Are they breaking in and, and smoking or stealing shit no, at night? No, nobody's doing nothing. Everything was still, it still has its furnace. It's just they're there. dealing I around mean, the corner. Still, all right, well, electric, you need to just go find two is. good families to live in. It. That's what you need. How many bedrooms no, are there? Exactly. No, I, I just wanted to know, like, if if it was, like, almost guaranteed, like, if you have property and you put it for a low enough number, somebody's going to rent it. All right, but listen. It's not guaranteed, you don't no. Want, you don't, wait, 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 stop. Okay. You, number one, you don't want okay. the lowest number. You want the highest number. You want to find right. out what, how many beds, that's what I'm asking you, how many bedrooms are there? There's four bedrooms upstairs, Ooh. but I'm going to make one of them a kitchen because the guy, he, like, took out the, the I guess, the separator between the two families it, it, there's two doors in the front that leads to two like one goes straight upstairs one goes a duplex the duplex the, uh, is it a legal duplex does it have two yes. two electric meters yep it's at 2419 coleman avenue i'm not going there goddamn it she ain't taking my ass no st louis i don't care how good the ribs are shit <laughs> I, I, I already did my time you do your time how old are you i'm 27 27 27 yes, so you're doing the right thing so listen, seriously, okay, you need to make it so it's two units. They both got kitchens, and you need to yeah. go and find out what is your maximum amount of rent that housing will pay. There's a list they put out. You could probably go it's online. Nine fifty. All right, well, ask for the most, and you can always work your way down. Just make sure that place passes inspection, got smoke detectors and everything you need, looking good, fresh paint, you know, and ask for the most, and then work your way down and negotiate with housing. But you got to find two good tenants that are willing to live there to get the ball rolling. But you better make sure they're ready. Get that kitchen put in right away. No, yes, sir. And I, and I just got one last question. When I'm doing the Section 8, when I put it in, should I also offer the tenants uh, that I pay their electric for them? Or no. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
It, yeah. it depends. Okay. You can, you can rent it with all utilities included. Go ahead. Or you can rent it with them paying their own. The more utilities they pay, the less rent you got. But you don't want no big, fat-ass utility bill. Is, is there air right. conditioning in it? No. It, 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 ha- it has all the, the vents, everything. The HVAC is set up for it. But I was thinking I might put some AC units in the top windows and just call well, it a day. Stay you know, I'm going to tell you, my gut tells me play it safe and let them pay their own power. Okay, because you okay. don't want that expense, okay. and if you get stuck and things go wrong, you end up paying power for people, not only them living yeah, there. If somebody leaves their stove on yeah, accidentally, whatever, or they do whatever yeah. they do, or they're Listen, running too much power. Try to always you pay wanna... as little utilities as you can. You'll, how many water meters you got? One or two? Oh, uh, I don't know. I All right, don't we'll know. find out. If you got two, let them pay the damn water, too. But negotiate the highest rent you can, but you need to go find two tenants, that you and make sure you check these tenants out with the criminal record. And, uh, you know, make sure you meet with them and you get, you get a good, comfortable feeling with them. Find two Section 8 voucher tenants and advertise and start looking for them right away. That's what you need. Two tenants with Section 8, and then housing will pay their portion. The tenants will pay their portion based on their income, you know, and uh, try to find the best people you can. And t- let me tell you something. Uh, if it's a rough neighborhood, you better make sure these tenants are cool you're putting in there because you don't want to be part of that shit going on in the neighborhood. Yeah, because then the police start to come down on you as the landlord. All right, well, good luck to you, and go get a gun permit. (laughs) All right, I got you. Right on, I appreciate that. All right, take care. All right. All right, what you got, Rafael? What you got? That's all. Wow. Are you guys... I mean, how much time we got? What do you want to do? Two and a half hours. What are your plans now for the rest of the day? Uh, Hang out with you. We're going to do oh, some work the on the books. We're going to knock that out. Where's the baby at home? Just waiting. I'll come hang out with you. All right. So she's going to come here. Or what? Go yeah, to my wherever, house. What yeah. do you want to do? Wherever. Um, we can work at my house with the baby. You can meet over there if you yeah, want, right? Are you going to run up there? Is she going to meet you there? Is she all going to meet you there? Yeah. What? All right. Maybe. So we got anybody else have a call? Let's How go. about we give it another? Whatever you want to do. Let's do it. People really have questions and want to help as many people yeah, as Yeah, let's can. keep going. All right. What do you got? How are you? I mean, that was a really important thing. The guy's buying places. Yeah, no, nobody's you know? saying. I'm just, don't, don't make me the one that want to leave. I'm not trying to leave. I'm going to the bathroom. Yeah, How about that? Go to the bathroom. Make sure you leave a dollar. Make sure you wash your hands, too. All right, what do we got, Rafael? Thanks. Aaron needs to go back and start looking for property. Yeah. Oh, holy Mary. We had an accident. Hello, hello. Hey, can you hear me? Hi, it's Ben. How are you? How can we help you? Hey, Ben, how you doing? Uh, David Fetchin in here. Uh, how you doing? I, good. I, I how was are called. You? Uh, I want. You had mentioned previously that uh, you like to stay in that seventy-five thousand range per unit uh, for apartment complexes, and I was just wondering why that number. What ROI are you looking for? What uh, happens when you get you above know, that the, number? You know, the thing is that number. That number works for us where we're at and what based on the rents we can collect. You know, if we're going to be getting only eight, nine hundred a month for rent, then, you know, mm-hmm. if you pay more than 75000 you ain't going to have no cash flow, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of expenses involved. So if, I gotta, if, right. I, if I'm paying 75000 a unit, I'm going to be borrowing from the bank 80% of that. So in order okay. for me to carry that debt and the taxes and the insurance and the mortgage and the maintenance and the operating costs, if I pay more than 75%, I'll be in a hole. I'll be negative. So in order for me to so, stay positive cash flow in my market, with my rents only being eight to a 900 a month, you know, or a thousand maybe, I can't afford to pay more than 75 bucks a thousand a unit. Okay. So what, are you still seeing deals out there for 75,000 a unit or are no, they drying up? No, in Florida? no, no. They haven't hit yet. I'm waiting for them to come back. Right now they're at crazy money. Right now they're trying to get a hundred a door, 110 a door. Okay. Uh, the numbers don't make sense right now. There's too many people in the market that have 1031s that are willing to overpay to avoid paying taxes. We got too much foreign money coming in. Interest rates are too low. So people are settling for a very low return on their investment. So, you know, we're finding little here and there. We're getting ready to buy a place for like in the 60s per door, but it's tax credit and it's got a lot of right. strings attached to it. But no, we're not finding any good deals at that price right now. 100 a door, I could buy all day long. But at 100 a door, I'm working for free because I got yeah, too much debt. Yeah, you don't want to work for free. So, you know, I'm working for free. It's crazy. 
And uh, you know, I do want to I do want to protect and uh, not pay tax on my 1031. So that's why I've been going to retail. Because in retail, at least I know I'm getting a good guaranteed, pretty much a reasonable investment and return of about 10% of my money or 12. Right. See, this is why I'm, we do a lot of deals in Michigan, and that's why I'm seeing an influx of Florida investors that are coming out here to Detroit and buying up. Well, because Detroit uh, got hit the hardest. Okay, Detroit yeah, we really went. Got good. We did. I heard back in Detroit, you could buy taxes. You could buy property just for the taxes when the market would belly up. So, you yeah, know, Detroit is where you're going to find time. things really cheap. And everybody's flocking there, but you know, all, you know, just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's going to make your money too. But, well, you, you got to know what you're doing in Detroit. Yeah, it's you a, know it's a different animal. You, but it could be a good, you know, it, it can only go up in Detroit. I think it already hit bottom, so it only going to go up, and it's a good elevator to get on. You're probably at the yeah, second we hit floor right now. Three, four years ago, it's yeah, been so going you're up probably you're probably at the second floor, and you can take that elevator up a couple of floors and make some money. Are you looking at other markets, or are you just concentrating no, in Florida alone? It's too hard. We're just a family business, so we're trying yeah. to stick to Florida because this way we can easily manage it. You know, I like to be able to manage our stuff ourselves and be close to it, you know, and that's why we're just sticking to Florida. We're just going to wait. Sometimes you got to wait, you know. But we're doing yeah, retail in the meantime. Okay. So you... All right. Well, good luck to All you. Right, thank you. And stay thank away you. from 8 Mile Road. All right. <laughs> Bye. You still got that porn shop there? Pawn shop? Oh, yeah. the, the guy Hardcore porn. Hardcore I met him porn, down at Cayman yeah. Islands. Nice guy. Yeah, I seen the picture of it. All right, Rabo, who you got? What you got? Do we have any calls from Poland? You speak Polish. There was a Polish guy in Brooklyn. He commented. He said, I'm uh, Polish, Polish and in Brooklyn. Yeah, he's probably Russian. <laughs> Hello? Somebody there? Got too many calls that still going. Too many calls coming in? People are calling us. We need a call center. Google Voice is slow. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right. So anyway, we got to get our income expenses done for the rest of the year, close out the rest of the year yeah, on all properties. He's got a call going on. You got one coming? What else we got? Here we go. Are you ready to take over that apartment building? Which one? Yeah. Hello? Kind of. No. Hello? We lost him. It's ringing. It's ringing. But I heard somebody, too. Yeah. Hey, it's Ben. How are you? How can we help you? Hey, hey how you doing, Ben? Uh, thank you so much for taking my call. How are you? Pretty good. How can we help you? I wanted to see. So uh, I live in uh, central Illinois, and uh, we have uh, we have a lot of apartments here, but they're all uh, tax credited. Like, you have to have a income of not more than 32000 a year in income yep. to be able to rent. Mm -hmm. So there's, like, no like good luxury apartments and usually rental here two bedroom is around six seven hundred a month so, right, so let me, let me ask you a question are these what they call yeah. are these through the state are these litex low-income tax credit housing properties i think that's what it is i mean every time when i call i'm always looking for apartments for my employees and they're every single apartment in town has that income limit all right do you own them or are you just looking at them no, no, I'm just looking at it. I actually own some businesses and some commercial real estate. You know, we're yeah. small business owners, and I own uh -huh. the buildings as well. Great. That's where, you know, all my money is from, and I'm always looking into real estate. You know, right now, I'm into, like, only commercial real estate. Okay, well, so what's your question about the tax credit ones? So the, well, my question is, I mean, uh, there's some empty lots right now that, like, some good – there's some good areas in town where there's, like, some lands for sale that – where somebody, what do you suggest about like new construction apartments? I, I mean, mean how know, would somebody go about doing that? You know, building new construction is just like buying a property. You got to know, you know, what's it going to cost you? You got to have a budget. You got to do your homework. You got to find a contractor you can trust that's experienced. You got to know how much money you're going to be invested in that new construction. And then you got to look at what kind of rental income it's going to have. You know, is there going to be any okay. cash flow? New construction is pretty expensive right now because uh, wages are up, and materials are up. Uh, you need to have a budget. You need to sit down and say, okay, the land's going to cost me X amount of dollars. And it, yep. then you got all your soft costs for roads and fire hydrants and improvements. And then you got to build the building. You need to have a complete budget on what it's going to cost you to turn key that building and build it. Then you got to figure out, does it make sense? Well, of course, just the loans here. It's so like I just purchased uh, a commercial real estate building for one ninety about a month and a half ago, 
And since the building wasn't generating any income, you know, they made me go through a lot just to be able to get a 6%, you know, interest rate loan on that. You well, know, so like the loans, bank it seems like are really difficult. Basically, they, they loaned you that money based on you because yeah. the property can't come to bat for you because it has no income. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's so that's hard getting, it you know, loans on residents. Like, hard I to, know the potential. It's not hard to get loans you know. on properties that are generating cash flow. Yeah. Now, you want to get a construction right. loan. That's a whole different bowl of wax. You need to sit down with a yeah. banker and say, hey, but before you sit down with a banker, he's going to want you to sit down and show him your plan. He, he's going to want to say, no, okay, here's the land. You're going to have to invest some money into drawings. You're going to have to have some sort of budget to give them, and you're going to have to sit down, do your homework, and say, here, this is what it's going to cost me to buy this land, build this property. How much are you going to loan me? And then they're going to loan you the money and give it to you as you build it. They're going to have payouts uh, and stages. And you better make sure you got a contractor that you can trust and, uh, you know, that you can work with. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, right, listen, I'll... listen, the more time you put in it with something, the more money you make. So if you of can put course, your time yeah. into building a building, you should do it, you know. And if you find that it doesn't make sense, well, at least you know you made, it doesn't make sense. Your time was worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm just really starting small. I, I right now my main like income, I purchase a building, open a business, either a restaurant, cell phone store, convenience store, with a partner, and then I rent it out. Like I purchase the building, and I'm also partnered in the business. Well, so I get rental income from the building, and I make money from the business. Well, I got hey, I got an empty space. You can put a phone store in in Seminole, Florida. Let us know. <laughs> right, I got you. Only got three right now. I got three Boost Mobile stores and some uh, restaurant convenience store, but. Look yep. at Boost Mobile, okay? Yep, I All got right. you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you so news much. Newsflash, newsflash. Kobe yeah. Bryant was just killed in a helicopter crash, according to what somebody's showing me. Uh, everybody Kobe else, Bryant. TMZ everybody is, else uh, is reporting. TMZ is reporting that Kobe is, uh, Bryant just yeah. on board crashed in a helicopter. No way. Yeah, we just got that in on uh, on our phones. Oh, uh, a fire oh, broke out. Wow. All right, well, good luck to you, and do your homework and build that building, baby. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, good luck. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Thank bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. At least according to TMZ. Yeah, according TMZ to TMZ. TMZ reliable news. Yeah, it's pretty much reliable nowadays when That's it comes to these type of, pe- type of uh, celebrities. Five people are confirmed mm. dead. That's why I don't, I don't like helicopters, you know. I like to stick to the jets, the props, but helicopters Says it was commuting from uh, Newport Beach, California to the Staples Center. In his Swarovski S76 chopper. Because he, he doesn't play anymore, right? Hmm? He doesn't play anymore, does no. he? Yeah, Kobe Bryant doesn't play? No. Oh, so, I'm sorry, I don't watch I, mean, I know he had some legal problems He's retired. Stuff. He's retired now? He's retired. I know he had some legal issues. Man, that's a shame, though. He, had, he has four daughters. Man, that's a shame. One a newborn. All right, what do you got, Rafal? What do you got? More callers. More caller, more caller. Wow. All right, let's get another caller on the line. Let's do it. It's Sunday. And you heard it here first on the live Ben Mala podcast. Kobe Bryant passes away. Killed in a car. A a helicopter helicopter accident. Broke right here on the podcast. All right. What do you got? Nothing. Oh, it's ringing. That's a that's a most common helicopter. Yeah, but I didn't pronounce it right. Polish. Being Why would anybody yeah, ride a Polish team. helicopter? All right, hello? My water heater just exploded. Your water heater just exploded in your house? No. Somebody, Destro. Uh, Turn off the goddamn valve and make sure the water ain't shooting out. (laughs) It's like the second time he said that. Hello? Nobody. I think we're done. How many more people you got? Numbers keep coming. Numbers keep coming. Man. You can sit here all day, yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right, what do we got? Aaron, make sure you go home, go on LoopNet. Find out if there's any deals on LoopNet to buy. Yeah, I've been on it, like, and C-Rex. every day. C-Rex. 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 We're only looking for Florida right now. I know. Why, you wouldn't take a triple net somewhere else? That's like the, that's the only I exception. I, would, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I've gotta seen be a state at that's not taxable. Yeah. Because if you're in a taxable uh, yeah, state, you're yeah. going to give up 8 to 10% of your goddamn right. uh, mm-hmm. money into to the taxes. That's, that's a problem. Well, there's six states left. Look up the states that are non taxable. You do that? You want my yeah. phone? Can you just ask Siri that? Non-taxable Siri, what are the states, states that are non taxable? 
Did you do save all Siri, what are the states that are non-taxable? Yeah, you guys are serious. Here's what I found. What do you got for Paul? Hello? Hello? Hi. Hey, it's Ben Mel. How are you? How are you doing? How can we help you? Doing very good, very good. Ben, I'm actually calling from Canada. Uh, I buy some properties in uh, western New York. In Is that Niagara? Is Central western Indiana. New York Niagara Falls? Close to it. It's actually Jamestown, New York, Chautauqua County. Okay. And, uh, and we have uh, six properties there, and they're cash flowing like 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 crazy. But my question is, I've been looking. At, I, I go to these REITs and I and I meet with these people that buy houses in in in, in worse areas. To be honest with you, in Gary, Indiana, and other areas for for literally nothing, five hundred dollars. The a reason, reason why. why I wanted to even consider that area is because the houses that I'm buying in Western New York are nineteen ten, nineteen fifteen built, and and in West and in Indiana over nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties. So they last a little bit longer than what I'm buying. What do you think? I mean, you came from this crack house space. What do you think I should go into? Go go to the newer homes or stick to this stuff that's a little bit safer but older? Yeah, well, believe it or not, some of those 1915 houses are built better than the stuff in the 50s and 60s. But the point is, you're in Canada, and you're going to trust other people to run all this stuff in Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana, from my experience, has always been a very tough town. Uh, so who's going to run these houses? Who's going to fix up these houses? Are these houses going to make any money? Yeah, you could go buy a ton of shit cheap in Gary, Indiana, but you ain't going to make no money because nobody wants to rent them even. So what's the plan in Gary, Indiana? Right. Right now I'm paying around 30, average, I've, I'm paying around 38000 for a duplex. I'm getting around $1,200 a month in, in, uh, in uh, Jamestown, New York. So you think I should just continue buying? You know, until it's I best to work. Number one, you don't want other people playing with your money if you're going to avoid it. If you got the means to go and buy houses, if they're older and they're still in good shape and they keep getting remodeled and fixed up and you're making money, then I'd stick to what you're doing. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You're going to go across the country to Gary, Indiana. And let me tell you, I heard, I, I, I knew a lot of people from Gary, Indiana. These were some of the toughest people I ever met. You know, uh, unfortunately, when all the... Factories closed down and destroyed those towns. Uh, yeah, I heard, so, I heard, yeah. you know, if you if you got something going in New York, keep going. Just keep fixing them up, you know, and uh, keep making that money. You know, why go across country and be so far away from your investments? You know, stick to okay. stick to New York. You sure ain't going to make it in Canada. I mean, Canada prices yeah. are crazy. But at least New York yeah. is close to Canada. You cross the border, you're there. So yeah, I'd stick to what you're doing. If what you're doing is making your money, stick to it. Just ben, keep thank growing. You, thank you All very right, much. good luck to you. Awesome. Take care. Bye. All right, if anybody wants to know, there are, these are the states that don't have tax. Okay. You sure these are tax-free, right? No income. Nine states with no income tax. Alaska, I ain't freezing my ass off there, but you can go there. No state tax. Florida, nice and sunny. Nevada, I almost went there, but... I'm afraid my son will be in a casino every goddamn night. So Nevada's no state tax. South Dakota, I never heard of real estate there, but no state tax. Texas, that's a big it's one, but you better watch it. Texas is sneaky. Yeah, no, no state tax, but you got double the real estate yeah, tax. Yeah, you got the school tax and the, and the, and the property tax. So Texas is kind of tricky. You got to be careful with them. Washington State, I'm not familiar, but I heard it's pretty expensive. Uh, no state tax. Wyoming, no state tax. Tennessee, I didn't know that. That's where Jimmy Hart's from. Tennessee has no state tax. Uh, I, click on them, they, I think they need to start charging state tax in Tennessee. I've been there. Uh, they need some money. And New Hampshire. There you go. Those are the no state tax income states. All right, very good. What else you got, Rafael? That's your phone. So I'd rather be in a plane than a helicopter. I know, yeah. I know helicopters. Because the engine goes out on that. the heck out of me to go right go down. down. Wait, Who we, else was in a plane we with him? Meeting, we met with a helicopter pilot that uh, at, at, at his farm, at uh, Nash's I've been farm. On, I've been on a helicopter. He was in Vietnam. He was in Vietnam. Yeah. He'd been shot down a couple Got of times. All right, hello. How are you? It's Ben. How can we help you? Hey, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? How can, what can we do for you? Hey, uh, 
Hell, I never thought I'd be able to talk to you. Well, we're doing it, baby. We're doing it. What do you got? I know. I know. Hey, I was wondering um, about um, um, tiny houses. What do you think? How do you feel about those? What kind what of houses? What kind yes, of sir. What kind of houses? Well, there's this big thing about um, a lot of a lot of retired people. You know, instead of doing the RV thing, they're going into the tiny houses. Oh, tiny and, houses, tiny yeah, houses, tiny houses, like tiny houses. What do you think about tiny houses? Tiny I don't know. Are you gonna find enough tiny people to live in them? Like midgets, sir. I mean, when sir, you say okay. tiny, let me tell you something. You know, I used to, I used to, you know, uh, rehab a lot of places, and I honestly made the room smaller because they served the purpose of the family needed. And mm -hmm. it took up, like, you know, if I had a house that had a tremendous bedroom in it, and I figured, well, this family of, with four kids needs more bedrooms, you know, they didn't need such a big bedroom. I'd, I'd whack that thing and put that bedroom into two bedrooms. So, you know, yeah, it depends yeah. on the market. If there's a demand, I, I, know, I know it works in urban areas. In big cities where real estate's expensive, all that, you know, micro, tiny stuff works because people are happy just to have a roof over their head, they don't need a lot yeah. of space, and to have a, a a reasonable rent. So you know, it's definitely something that'll work, but you got to make sure you're doing it where it's going to work at. You got to make sure there's a demand for that market. Okay, now here's the other thing, and that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, okay, um, out here in Texas, that's where you know I live in Texas. We have a lot of um, oil field workers and stuff like that. And I was wondering if I could take, like, some of those, some of them tiny houses and build, like, a, you know, build, like, a little subdivision for them or whatever for the duration that they're going to be working on that oil field. And I don't think, I mean, maybe, personally, maybe just because I lived in Texas for a long move time. To the next location, you know, they can take them, take them with them. So... I Take the I house with them? Yeah, it's the tiny the home concept. concept. That's the whole tiny home yeah. concept is that it's a tiny house on a trailer, and you can actually – it's like a mobile home. A mobile you can home. take it with yeah, you. But, exactly. you know, I'll be honest with you. I lived in Texas for five years around a lot of oil refinery workers, pipe fitters, and, and things like that, and rig men, and, yeah. and uh, you know, scaffolding guys. And I knew a lot of those so guys. They were my friends. They you know I, tell they you, I tell you, they don't – the one thing they do want to come home to is a big – clean shower they like coming home and those oh, showers yeah. and those bathrooms and those tiny homes are really small and and, and you know oil you couldn't even fit in one yeah 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 <laughs> but uh yeah you know i yeah, i personally yeah. don't think that the hey. oil field workers and those guys you know they get paid big money some of those guys are making 50 60 70 bucks an hour you know and oh, yeah and so i don't think that they would i don't think they mind spending the extra money i got a guy he, he a friend of mine and he he helicopters off the off the uh state and goes work in the middle of the ocean i mean he's making like 90 bucks an hour when he comes home he wants to come home to a nice house and and that's what he's paying for for his family because he makes that type of money oh yeah so i don't oh, think yeah. the i don't think the oil it works in urban or well, i don't know about moving them around i thought you were talking about building them you know um, well yeah no 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 that's Hey, hey, Ben. That's what I want to do. Is is build them. You got to build them where there's a, where there's a scarce the only... of housing. You got to build them where well, people they... can't find housing. There's not enough housing. Oh yeah, that's what I want to do. The oil field thing was just, you know, to sell them to the oil company, to where their workers can go out there and do their work. You know, and have somewhere to come home to. Well, they might know? as well buy a manufactured but, house or trailer. Right. I don't know. But, but tiny houses big, to me work big, in crowded big, areas, big. not not, yeah, not that, in Texas where there's abundance of land. land. Right. That is something I want. I, I would love to do I mean, is actually build tiny houses for. They make houses uh, out of containers now. They make houses out of you know, a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But I would and, only and do the, it. I would only do it where it's hard to find a house. Sir. I would only do it where it's hard for people to find a house, where where, yeah, where it's hard. That's what that that's exactly what I want to do. You know, to where you don't move those around. You know, yeah, um, moving houses around. I I have, um, the good thing about it, the good thing about it, my dad has his own his his own company where um, we do septics. I work for my for my dad, and we actually 
have a septic company and it's very profitable and it'll be no problem to put septics in these places. Um, hey, you and my son have a lot of I was about to say, you work for your father. I'm sorry for you. I know how I, I understand how Probably. it could be. Hey, you and my son have a lot in common. <laughs> you know what you and my son have a lot in common? Oh, hell yeah. You know hey, what you got in common? You're both full of shit. Man. What are we... <laughs> we, we ah, hey, me and my funny. dad go through the same fucking thing. Yeah, I mean, but my dad, hey, ben, my it's dad a shitty job a you got, but somebody's got to do it. Yeah, man. Hey, you, my my dad's a hell of a lot like you, Ben. I oh, mean, he's you're lucky. Oh shit! Just I don't mean, fall in one of those septic massive. tanks. All right, Thanks. well, oh. go go build some tiny houses in a crowded neighborhood and don't fall in the tank. It was good talking to you. Hey, Take care. Okay. Them, let me ask you one more thing. All right, come on, let's go. Okay, um, so if I do these tiny houses, if I do these tiny houses, um, what do you think I could charge with this um, charge for something like that? I mean, it depends, depends on demand. It depends on like what the market pays. 800 square feet or something. I don't, 800 I don't square know, feet ain't a t- 800 square feet's a decent sized two bedroom. No, it's a house. Oh, it's a house. It's a tiny house. And they're not 800, it's, like 600. Actually, anyway, you, you understand. We've seen the house. Yeah. movie. Okay, Listen, you have to you, you have to figure out what your market is. You have to figure out what your market is and for that home. So you need to go out and do your research and figure out what other tiny homes in that area are renting for. You know, and that's the only yeah, way we can any determine awesome. anything. Well, then you need to see they're what the awesome. other then you need to see what the other apartments in the area are renting for and maybe try to match that rate. That's the best advice I could give you. But I don't know. But you know, you, you take care and we appreciate the call in. Okay, hey, th- hey, y'all, thanks for calling, man. Hey, I'm glad, I'm glad I got to talk to you and Ben. Hey, all so right, what you want for that Batmobile? Uh, two hundred fifty thousand, quarter million, signed by Batman and Robin. Come on, write me a check. Oh, oh send shit. me a wire. <laughs> send I ain't me a taking wire. no check with no septic <laughs> guy. All right, let's move hey, on. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Anti septic. Tiny homes, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's a new fad. Yeah, these tiny homes. Get to the front it, door. Oh, I couldn't fit in no tiny home. Forget that. They got families living in these <clears> things. <throat> Two, three people, homeless. and four people in these tiny homes. I've seen in New York, they got glass boxes they're putting up now. People are living. In. It's crazy. Man, it's containers and yeah, in metropolitan you know. areas and heavy, Ain't all densely all populated shot areas edge like Aaron. You know. Aaron's room is actually not that big. Aaron's room no. is bigger than most tiny houses. No, not his room. No, his room is average. If you count size. the patio, you don't even go out of the patio. <laughs> I do. <did. laughs> All right, I think we did it up for today, or what? Did we hear it? We got a caller, or no? No yeah, caller on the line. No All right, answer. folks, it's been fun. It's been a Sunday, almost three hours stuck in here with you two. All right, good luck to you, and we'll see you next Sunday. Stay tuned. We're going to try to do this every Sunday at noon. We'll try to get the callers maybe again. That we missed this week. All right. God bless. Good luck. And adios, amigos. Thank you, guys. Thank you.